All right, everyone. Hope you're all doing good today. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. It is your bi-weekly horror hotfix. We are back from the minor break. And hope you're all doing good. Uh, I'm doing... I'm doing all right, actually. I can't complain too much. <laughs> uh, before we begin, I just do want to say a uh, big cheers to Aimbot. I was uh, watching the end of that, and it was quite sweet. So I'm hoping that uh, the finale show will be quite good there. Uh, as well, AGQ 2024 will be live in person from January 14th to the 21st in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I think that was actually just announced today. Uh, you can use exclamation mark AGDQ in Twitch chat for more information. Alrighty, so today, uh, I do this, I think, I've been doing this every year. Uh, I've been running Sweden's in the Crypt for, oh god, I think so. It's the end of 2019 or 2020 now, I think 2020. Uh, I've been doing this for a good chunk of time now. But uh, this is my third year doing it, but whenever uh, my birthday comes around, I decide, hey, why don't I just show you some of my favorite speedruns? Uh, which is usually Ill Bleed in two other games. So, um, before we get into that, uh, yes, today is actually my birthday. It's not even around my birthday, it's just straight up on my birthday, so... Yeah, I'm now old. That's how it goes. Uh, anyway, without uh, further ado, we're just gonna get into something, some of my favorite games that I like to watch or play. And uh, we're going to be starting off with Ill Bleed. I'm pretty sure I've had this on for the past every time, so I hope you enjoy it again. This time we're doing a good ending. So, um, Punchy, take it away. Hello, everyone. I'm Punchy. I'll be doing Ill Bleed, and this time I'll be doing good ending. By the way, happy birthday, Dysus. Thank you. Happy birthday. Right. I'm just going to jump into it, and then we can do the explanations. Three, two, one, begin. Okay, so the premise of Illbleed is that we are Eriko Christie, who goes to an amusement park called Illbleed to find her friends. It's like a horror theme park. Her friends go here, they disappear, so she has to go after, go after them. And in a good ending, we're going to save all our friends. Uh, on previous hotfixes, we have done any percent where you do not save your friends, as saving your friends is slow. And yes, I was uh, I was granted the hotfix blessing. Every time McDyess has put this game on this show, which as noted, he does every year for his birthday, I have broken the world record in it. And this time was no exception. I like it. I, uh, I got I got the world record in this by 30 seconds today, like earlier today. High expectations for me. All right, so the main mechanic of this run is tagging traps like this to activate them without hurting us. That's what those sensors at the top of the screen are. They, uh, they respond to various traps. And the trap pattern is random, but it's only random within certain parameters. There are three sets of traps per level. So step one is figuring out what pattern you're on. The light bulb is not it, so it's not pattern A. We can rule that out immediately. Is it one door or two? Two, so that's pattern B. So I know what pattern I'm on, and therefore I can run through this hallway, bank left here, because it's the left one. if it's the window and it's not the window okay we can bank left to the shower room and it's this window so now that i've quickly ascertained what pattern i'm on i know what the traps are going to be so now i can make dodges according you have to memorize three different sets of movement and three different like game plans depending on what trap pattern you get I'm going to pick up the home run bat. Items are invisible in this game. That's what the sixth sense reacts to. The sixth sense reacts to items, but also enemies. How do you tell the difference between an item and an enemy? You don't. You just have to know. For instance, this hallway has many items, but also enemies. Uh, I don't really need items, though, so I'm just going to, like, hug the left wall and go about me business. That will avoid any enemies. And because this is pattern B, I actually have to do a skip here. So there's a fight, an enemy fight, that spawns in the kitchen, but only on pattern B. But if I space a jump correctly around the corner... Yep, that skipped it. That didn't look like anything, but that's actually kind of hard to do correctly. The jump is very awkward. Up the door is a pattern. Is a trap, rather. Successful fight skip. And there's another trap here that's a ceiling fan, but we can just kind of... Squeeze through that table, and we're good to go. That is also not really supposed to be possible. 
beer table is trapped. This one's consistent across all patterns. That one is always present. There is a fight in this bathroom. We're going to avoid it by sticking to the left wall here. It is usually faster to tag traps, but some traps play a cutscene even if they are tagged properly. If they are tagged, you know, simply Erica will just go, cool, and you won't take any damage, and you'll regain some of the spent adrenaline. Adrenaline is the blue brain bar in the bottom left. Uh, that's the resource you use to tag traps. If you run out, you're defenseless against most of the scares in the game, which is not good. Time for another trick. I'm going to clip through this wall. That was clean. Wow. <laughs> Straight through. I made it look like that had absolutely no collision at all. I promise you it does. I'm going to try another skip here. Oh, got it. Wow. There's, I skipped another enemy with that jump around the corner. That's quite tight. The spacing is very exact. All right, it's not mirror. I don't think it's TV either. Right? Nope. Okay. Final hallway. Well, for me having to worry about traps tonight. On pattern B, I can just hug the left side. I do have to tag this light bulb because an enemy encounter hides inside the light bulb. <laughs> and tagging an enemy encounter means Eriko will be able to act immediately on starting the fight. Uh, if you don't, Eriko will be knocked down briefly, and I would rather have that window opportunity to try and escape from combat. Escaping from combat is a matter of standing on the helipad and mashing B, whereupon a helicopter will come down and you escape the fight via a narrow escape. It's always narrow escape. Okay, so we've made it to the basement of the Banbalo house. The plot of every individual level is different. The plot of this level concerns uh, a hotel owner whose son really liked baseball, but then the neighborhood kids, you know, they bully the son for liking baseball too much, and then they burn the hotel down and the son dies or something that becomes a haunted hotel. And here's Bambolo himself. He has a flamethrower. Because of the fire stuff, you know? Like, it's a, it's a haunted amusement park. Like, don't take it that seriously. Nice, no damage. Boost him good. You can do a dodge move when in combat. It's where Eriko does the little step to the side and goes, shoo, shoo. It increases your heart rate. Uh, if your heart rate reaches 255, you die on the spot. That will probably never happen because Eriko starts the game with naturally high, like, heart rate increase resistance. I don't know what the stat should be called. I've forgotten what it is in English, frankly. Heart strength? Question mark? Anyway, now we're being chased. Uh, we would like to avoid combat with Ban Below, so we must avoid contact with him. Like so. Touching him will initiate a fight that we have to then escape from because we can't actually win the combat right now. This is the halfway point. There's our friend Kevin being dragged away. We would like to save Kevin. We are going to save Kevin. It is a function of this. I mean, we have to for this category, but also there isn't a category where you don't save Kevin. Because in order for Kevin to die, you have to wait 15 minutes real time. Uh, this is a time segment, you see. So if you take too long to solve the maze, Kevin will be dead when you get there. But there is no context in a speedrun where this would ever take 15 minutes. It's just it's just not that long. Look at this corner. Round it proper. Ooh, skitty, skitty, skitty. Nice. Okay. Clean dodges. Ambelo spawns on those corners, and if he spawns in sort of the wrong way, it can be very annoying. Okay, so boss fight number one. We want to stick close to him, which is kind of counterintuitive for fighting a guy with a flamethrower, but if you kind of stick to his right shoulder, there's a blind spot where his flamethrower won't hit you. So you do a full combo and you kind of like micro dash forward and continue your combo. When he gets stunned, you've got to adjust your position again. There's a spacing game being played here. He ain't got them hitboxes. I got great hitboxes. Perfect, perfect. Love that for me. Kevin will be alive, and he will join the team automatically after too many cutscenes. I'm gonna grab the Amazon here for, like, absolute safety. That is a full heal of all possible stats. And now Big Ben below. I'm going to trust that he'll whiff this hit. Yep. Oh. 
So now we have to engage in platforming and Ill Bleeds platforming is something. <laughs> it's really something. I like this game. I've, I've been running it like for years at this point. It's been pointed out to me recently. It's like, wow, you've been running this game for like three years now. Like, Has it really been that long? Oh no. But uh, Ill Bleed is no Sonic Adventure, you know? Like, this this was on the Dreamcast. This is a Dreamcast game. Okay, that went fairly well. No hits. Eriko makes it to the staff room, where the staff uh, do not show much concern for her well-being, so she brazenly kills one of the staff members in broad daylight with a baseball bat. That is just a thing that happens. She just does that. And steals their ID card. She, she, there is a cutscene that slowly shows her, like, gripping her baseball bat in anger, and she just bats a human being in the back of the head and kills them. Except it turns out they're actually a robot, so she is, so she's not technically a murderer, good for her. But she totally wanted to. She totally wanted to kill a person. Like, 100%, in that moment, Eriko had murderous intent. And now we just got a platform to the end. I have accomplished this. I don't think I even took any damage, actually. Yeah, no, I haven't healed. That was just a remarkably clean stage one, actually. At least in terms of damage. Good for me. The goal is ahead. We have to use the ID card to open the gate. Holding down right trigger when menuing makes the, like, the animation of the newspaper flying in, like for the menu, the diegetic menu thing, makes it faster. Don't know why. It does, though. Yeah! Clear! At the end of every level, we gain a cash prize based on our performance. I didn't clear very many traps because I dodged most of them, so I get a penalty of $5,000. This doesn't matter. Money in this game is... given out in such unbelievably vast quantities. I'm going to buy, in the interest of safety for the next level, some healing items. Mainly items that reduce our bleeding. Uh, you didn't see it because I didn't get hit by anything, but there's a second gauge that can appear when you start to take damage, which is the bleeding gauge. It will be a red bar above the green bar. That's the thing most likely to actually kill you in this game, not running out of health. But wait, what's this? Let's go. Kevin! Yeah, so I think this is a change from the last time I showed this game on the hotfix, but Kevin actually gets his time in the spotlight in this run. More than once, as it happens. There is a difference between uh, female character animations and male character animations, so situationally, depending on the level, a male character can be better. And, well, we saved Kevin, so time for Kevin gameplay. The downside of Kevin is that if he gets into an encounter with an enemy and he didn't tag the fight in advance, he will run around on the floor like a baby for like 20 seconds. But the advantage of Kevin is that he jumps faster. Like, his jump is physically faster for some reason. And he recovers from landing quicker. Hug this wall, it skips a fight. Yeehaw. Oh yeah, the... the <laughs> What is this walk cycle? That's just Kevin's stanky leg. So all of the male animations uh, are use the same... Like, all of the male characters use the same animation preset, and Kevin's height is kind of not correct for it. <laughs> so he just has one leg that looks broken the whole time. Uh, it clearly was mo out with the taller characters in mind. Uh, who we will generally not see in this run, because Randy is kind of not useful to us, for reasons we will get to. Uh, there is a character we need to save in this level as well. We need to save uh, Michelle. Uh, we'll do that very quickly at the end of the level. Where is the worm? Where is the worm? 
Don't like that. Don't like that. I didn't see a worm. Where's the worm? Where's the worm? Aha! Okay. The worm spawning is a little random, so it not showing up at the start there kind of threw me off my rhythm, but the rhythm is recovered. My groove is back in. Back in. You've thrown off Kevin's groove. Hugging this wall here skips another fight. You really don't want to take those fights, they're very obnoxious. So all that stuff about tagging traps that I explained in the first level, uh, irrelevant for chapter two, you don't have the horror monitor, the thing that lets you do that, it just takes it away from you for this level. It'll come back in a bit. The worm, the worm, the worm. Okay, dodge around. The bad artist. Okay, so here's a bit where Kevin saves time. These jumps are faster than female characters. For some, like, he, he just recovers from jumping faster. We needed that baby bottle. It gives us access to a haunted convenience store. Because there's a ghost of a baby outside. You don't. There's, there's no physical thing you can see. It's just like the disembodied crying voice of a baby. As the plot of this level concerns uh, killer worms. This is Revenge of the Queen Worm. There's a lot going on in this game. As you can see, I'm breathless. Uh, there is a man who was raising his beloved worms, but then one day one of the worms got really big and laid waste to a drive through theatre for some reason. Hugging this wall here skips a fight. So our goal is to appease the ghost of this man who was raising worms by also killing his beloved big worm, who is called Rachel. Collect the spanner. And now we have to use that to knock down these billboards to create a path for us to get to some barrels of fuel over there. So we can use that fuel to fuel this flamethrower. There's just a flamethrower there. It's just there. Ah. Menuing hard. Godla. The movie posters are great. Cool. Path thus made, we can now platform over to the barrels, and once again we must contend with ill Leaf platforming. Goblin Moon is the name of that movie. Uh, ill lead. So this is where Kevin techniques save time on this level over Eriko, because Kevin can just do this platforming faster. Not by a huge amount, but by enough that it's like worth doing. Like a few seconds. Kevin's jumps are faster, he recovers faster from landing. Just, just it's got good hops. It's got good hops. Will it work properly? Okay, good. Normally, I'm very accustomed to getting... You can't use that here when I try and use the fuel. Alright, so now we have to fight the boss of the level, which is Rachel. Nice, get a counter hit. You want to bait Rachel into attacking by sort of keeping the right distance, and thus stealing a counter hit like so. When they do that flail, that's a counter hit. That's good for us. Y'all ever played fighting games? Well, Illbleed is a secret fighting game. You've got to learn about frame data and counters and stuff. Rachel is stuck in the loop. Rachel is falling for this Oki. They don't know which way to block. They can't block it. It's unblockable. They just don't know. Ah, they escaped. They realize they have the ultimate trick. Whoa, I almost got hit by that. So this is like random 
doing this movement helps, but sometimes Rachel can just do whatever. That was quite a good fight. That was quite good. I approve of this. I'm going to let this cutscene rock because... Because. It looks like Bruce Forsyth, right? That's the joke I always go with, but Americans don't know who that is. I just remember the name because... Uh... Yeah, <laughs> I, I always, do the, the, I always do the joke. It's a fun joke. I like the joke. <laughs> Bruce Forsyth, see? So, you appear to be okay. Oh, that's a relief. At last, we can be together forever. Let's go back to hell. Hey, you. Let's go back to hell. One. Thank you. I'll never forget your kindness. And they're off. We put the we put the ghost of the worm to rest along with along with the guy whose name I don't remember. <laughs> Not sure it comes up actually. Anyway, now we have to save Michelle. Very important you don't forget this before you leave. Uh, Rachel is over here being beaten to death by three monkeys wielding sticks. So it is much easier to do this fight after the boss fight because you have the flamethrower. Uh, you can do this earlier with like a with a with a pipe as a melee weapon. Very difficult. Very annoying. Just come here after. Like that's Michelle saved. We're done. Cool. Uh, Michelle will never be used in this run. She is the frail but high adrenaline character, and frailty is not a virtue in Illbleed, so she does not get used. So with that taken care of, we have saved two characters. Use the gas tank, and we exit the level. We just crash through the exit gate with the car. That's how you escape this level. Okay. 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 $80,000! Buying once again some healing items. These are not for safety, I mean they're for safety technically, but the previous stage I bought items for marathon safety because if I make a mistake there's not an easy way to recover from a, a disadvantageous position. Uh, this I buy healing items even when I'm like gunning for record because you're gonna take damage on this level. It's gonna happen. This is wood puppets. We will be swapping back to Eriko for this. The advantage of uh, female characters as well, I mentioned the advantages of male characters, they jump faster. Uh, there are more advantages we'll get into later, but one of the advantages of a female character is that they swing melee weapons better. They have better frame data on their melee attacks, and that matters for this level. Hence, we once again swap back to Eriko. Okay, so this is a, a trap level, so I need to actually pay attention to what pattern I'm on. It's not pattern C. Which means it could be anything. What you got? That is A. That's pattern A. Back saw blade is pattern A. The plot of this level concerns lumberjacks and trees that eat lumberjacks. I'm not sure there's really an explicit plot of this level so much as it's just kind of there are trees and they're lumberjacks and they both hate each other. But you know what? Mood. Ox, Bloodstain, and the Wall with Light Holes is pattern A. Cool. 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 There are two of these really close together, which is very rude. Uh, the empty ceiling is at the trap here, which, cool. cool. Thank you. Hack that window, and then I think I can just hug the wall. Cool. Hug the wall here on the corner. Yep, good to go. That avoids a whole lot of traps without having to actually manually tag any of them. So how's Randy getting on the next friend we need to save?
Not fantastically. So Randy's been turned into a wood puppet. And also, furthermore, Randy is missing his brain at the moment, so he'll only speak in... weird noises. There are actually two variants of Randy that you can get. You can either find Randy's brain, which will restore his status to normal, or you cannot get his brain, but save Randy anyway, which will give you the character Brainless Randy, who is Randy, but with no brain, which means he has no adrenaline stat. This makes him basically unplayable. Unfortunately, it's also faster. So, Brainless Randy is what you're getting. The game does not care if you save Randy's brain or not for the good ending. Combat. So, this is where Eriko's improved swing speed over her... over the male characters actually matters, but also, combat in this game has a quirk where at regular enemies will only die after they have taken enough damage, but also after they receive a counter hit state. That's a counter hit state. When the enemy reels backwards like that after taking a hit, that's a counter hit state. You can deal damage all of the day, but until an enemy receives a counter hit blow, they won't actually die for good. Okay, so you see that bleeding bar? Now that I am bleeding a certain amount when I run, it blinks, which means my bleeding is now increasing when I run. This is bad because that'll never go away unless I slowly walk. And bleeding out like that also expands your hitbox for the purpose of traps. So I'm gonna heal that bleeding now before it starts causing me issues. If you start to bleed out even a little, certain trap dodges just don't work right. And you'll get hit by more and more stuff, which starts this loop of things going wrong in this run. So it's better to just heal the bleeding immediately. Randy's brain is in that room I just walked past. Sorry, Randy. No brain for you. This puzzle is one of the only regional differences in this entire game because the solution is different on the Japanese version. It's a word pun. Otherwise, the American and English versions of this game... It, sorry, the American and Japanese versions of this game are identical in terms of speed. The reason I'm playing the Japanese version is not because it's faster, it's because it's cheaper. The American version of this game is like $200, the Japanese version was like $60. Frugality! Something to be noted as well about the uh, Japanese and the uh, North American version. My favorite difference is that uh, they just changed some of the puzzles to make puns different. Yeah. Like the only thing they changed, really. Otherwise, it's it's the same game. This game is expensive. This is an expensive game to buy in English. It's still yeah. pretty expensive even in Japanese, actually. Also, in case anyone's wondering what the... Uh, puzzle change is. I don't remember the Japanese answer, but it pretty much just, uh, it's the woodman puzzle we just did. You have to spell it like the number wood. Like it was on a phone and like letters on there, it, it would spell wood if you type that in. In Japanese, I think it spells also wood, but in Japanese. The Japanese puzzle is a word play on the phrase hito goroshi, which is to kill a person, but because it sounds like digits, it's one, five, six, four. Hito goro. I've got that, whatever. There we go. Gordoshi. One, one, of, one of those syllables is wrong. I speak this language, I should know this. I don't. I'm blanking on it right now. Anyway, we're now in the chase segment. Uh, the mannequin doesn't run very far. We turn into a mannequin at some point, by the way. That just happens. You jump into a machine and you pop out the other end having been skinned of all your flesh. So I'm exploiting a thing with the game where bringing up the map will pause enemies briefly as I run. Which will allow me to not get caught, because if I get caught by an enemy, listening for footsteps, if I get caught by an enemy, it will start a combat that I will have to win to end it. Which is not fist. I actually need to pay attention to the audio here because you don't you can't really see a great amount behind you. 
and the footsteps as the best indicator you're getting. He's following me much closer than I would find ideal. Okay. Once you get to about this tunnel, they despawn, and you're good to go. So, note uh, that we are made entirely of wood right now. Uh, this will be on the test later. So, as we are entirely made of wood, we're going to pick up uh, wood-eating bugs. Higuimushi. It literally wood-eating bug. Uh, we pick this up and put it in our inventory, absolutely no problem. Because we need that to get rid of this tree. Uh, why why the bugs only eat the tree, but not the wood of you, is a... Uh, uh, hmm. I don't know. But now we are above the woodcutters trying to give us grief. Oh, actually, there are more. Re There's one other regional difference: is that the food items are different in the Japanese version compared to English. And I think I can demonstrate that here for fun. Uh, just an entire JPEG of a grandma is the best food item in the game. That heals you to full. That's a kaiseki biori which is a kind of seasonal cuisine set. I'm not really sure how to explain that, whatever. Point is, I just think it's funny that the, the, the I, it's just a JPEG of, like, that's someone's grandma. That is someone's real grandma. That's just in the game. And sneak past this guy is a mite scary. Did he fall off the ledge? I think he did. If you boost around that guy in the right way, he will fall off the ledge trying to chase you, and that's good for me. So it now means I can move, mostly unimpeded. To the fake emergency room. Emergency rooms are normally healing stations in this game. You can get, like, a health refill there. Uh, but it's actually fake in this level. It's fake. Uh, Randy's mannequin form is being beaten up by these two fake doctors. So we're going to beat them up using our mighty T-pose attack. Yeah. They will try and check me with shin with uh, shin kicks like they're playing Tekken. They got the frame data. I don't got the frame data. My frame data is very bad. So I got to come at them from afar. And the same rules apply. I got to kill them with a counter hit. That's actually quite good. Cool indeed. I'll take that. Then we got to approach and save Randy. We have now saved brainless Randy because we did not get Randy's brain. Good. I can get away with not healing because I am not bleeding so much that it's going to increase while I'm running. So that was a good fight. But where's the guy going to spawn? Left side? Whee! Okay, <laughs> make a funny noise. That was a bit scary. Oh uh, yeah, in the English version of the game, the, the food items are like... What is it? It's a salad and a steak dinner, I think, is what you get in the English version of the game. Whereas in the Japanese version, it's... Chinese noodles and a kaiseki dori. Alright, so now I gotta fight some lumberjacks. And I will once again hit them with my T pose move. Ah. Bro's got better frame data than me. They always know just what to exploit. It's cheap! Bro is using the cheap stuff! Alright, there's my counter hit. You should be dead. Mokujin is low tier in this game, man. I'm fighting from disadvantage. Okay, so I'm now bleeding a lot, and I would rather not be. I'm gonna heal that. I'm gonna eat the Kaiseki as well. I ate a whole grandma. I wouldn't normally pick that up, so it's just like, why not? There, I have it. 
I'm not tagging these fights because the mannequin doesn't have like a surprise animation. My heart rate will still increase when I get into these fights, but I can act immediately because mannequins don't do that thing where they get surprised and knocked over, even if you don't tag the fight. So there is no need to do it. And my heart rate is of no concern. That was a really good fight. See, that's what it looks like when it goes very when it goes very well. There's a sneaky normal trap in the locker room. Very mean, very rude that that's there. All right, fight number three. What you got? Ooh, I'm surprised that whiffed. I'm not surprised that didn't. That's still pretty good. Your bleeding meter goes down a bit when you stand perfectly still, so you have some time to recover a little bit of bleeding at the end of a fight if you stand still as soon as you know you've secured the kill. So I would have preferred to have stood still there for a moment instead of doing that final attack. But I'm still not bleeding enough for it to matter, so it is okay. That's like a little micro thing you can do to maybe slightly squat yourself under the bleeding threshold if you took some damage in the fight. All right, let's actually fight the main boss. Free with a mustache. But here we're going to exploit Eriko's very invincible dodge frames to dodge through these tree roots as they swing at us, and then do a three-hit combo. If you get a tree root swing, you can do a three hit. If you vomit, you can only get two. Going for the third will get you hit every time. It's also important not to accidentally cancel out of your dodge too early. You can cancel your dodge into an attack at any time, but doing so will end your invincibility early, which is undesirable for dodging through this route. Let your dodge actually complete before you try and go for your swing. Good fight. Good pattern. The more tree swings you get there, the better. Vomiting is slower, because you can't complete your string. And we escape the mill. This hallway is here put just to kill you if you happen to be bleeding out by the time you get here. The only reason it's there. Just to mess with you. Goal! Da, 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 da. Success. My prize is... $116,000. That's a lot of money. That's more money than I could ever possibly spend on healing items. But I will need that money later. Buy a lot of healing for this next level. Because we are going to the Killer Department Store. The Killer Department Store's gimmick is that it pays you the prize money for the level up front because there are certain money barriers as the level progresses, and traps will steal away your money. You'll we'll once again use Eriko for this stage. Our game plan doesn't really change. We still avoid getting hit by traps. Keeping the money from previous levels will let us pass the money barriers with much ease. Okay, so no trolley, so it's not pattern B. Immediately I have ruled out pattern B because it isn't the trolley. Instead it's pattern A or C. And we can determine that from this trap. Which one is it? What have we got? That is B. That flick I'm doing to the side is me looking at my notes. Floor, purple ceiling. Cool. Cool. And red. Nope. Tag the red face. I want it. I want to tag it. There we go. Got there. Cool. And explain the story of the scenario. I think it's like a shop to you drop kind of challenge situation against like a twisted department store manager who later turns out to be a spider. Cool. We'll get to that. 
But honestly, this one doesn't have much of a story per se. It's just kind of, here's a department store that tries to kill you. Cool. I like the hatchet. We will need this for combat. Here's Hellcake. Hellcake wants a popping for his hell ness We'll give him a severed head. He loves it. He agrees to come with us. We don't actually need to take him with us, but just for the people. Hellcake can come with us just for this run. What is the game about in general? It's not really about anything. What you see is kind of what you get. Like, like what's happening right now? It is. It, what is happening right now is what it is. It simply is. There is no... There's nothing to get. We're picking up five pieces of meat here. Well, there are cockroaches at the end of this that take a random amount of uh, meat pieces to go away. I think it's like a seven, but I forget what the exact odds are, but five gives the best odds of getting through without taking any damage, but sometimes it random it random whether or not you can get through this without getting hit, but five is statistically likely to work at a whopping 25%. One. Oh, he went away immediately. That's lucky. One. Two. Three. Might get shot. It doesn't go away in that amount. I gotta take the hit. Because I need to have at least one meat remaining. Otherwise, I get kicked out of the next section. There. I'm full of blood. One hit is okay. See, you want to avoid getting hit like that because the bleeding is bad, obviously, but also you have to sit through the unskippable cutscene of you getting hit in the face. The chicken backdashed me! Come back here! I just lost a Tekken to a chicken. Ridiculous. Okay, so because I'm bleeding, gotta heal it off. to shrink my trap hitbox again for this next section. I am now in uh, the Room of Rotting Produce. There are worm fights dotted about the place, but you can squeeze yourself up here and casually ignore absolutely all of them, which is great fun. Once again, get on this shelf here. Squeeze past that. Is that close enough to tag the pile? Yes, it is. Nice. Exact spacing. It can be very difficult to hit the pile from the, the top of the shelf here. Cool. Getting the two-in-one is a little little optimization. It's, it really doesn't matter, but it pleases me, okay? And now for the hardest fight in the game. This isn't even a boss fight. This is a regular enemy fight that just sucks. Tag it so I can act instantly. I must kill three standard worms in combat. They will cover for each other, they will overlap each other in awkward ways, and their hitboxes are horrid. And I still need a counter hit to kill because they're still a regular enemy like all the others, and regular enemies need a counter hit before they'll die. This fight, blues. That's a counter hit. There's two counter hits actually, that's a remarkably strong intro. Down a hit. I'm gonna get hit by that guy covering for his mate. What a rude dude with attitude. Covered for his pal, as they tend to. No counter hit. That looked like it was so good for counter hit. Dude, where's my counter? Hmm. Oh, lucky. There's a counter hit for me. That guy dead. He's dead. He's dead. You? Counter hit? Counter hit? Counter hit? Nah, he's not dead. Why are you not dead? You should be dead, bro. What about you? You gonna die? Counter hit? Counter hit? Any counter hits? Dead? Dead? Counter hit? Oh, baby! He got the counter hit! That was actually really good. <laughs> that was frantic, but that was actually really good. <laughs> That's just what that fight is like. That's, it's such a mess. 
And yet that was actually really quite good. Okay, so we proceed to Kids World. Kids World would normally only open if you have $200,000. We have plenty of money because we haven't spent any of it on character upgrades and things like that. This game has character upgrades, incidentally. There's like a mini RPG thing running through this one. Uh, we don't interact with it at all in this run because I just don't need any upgrades to complete the video game, so I don't buy any. Why buy upgrade when can finish game? I play this section mostly by sticking to the right wall. That's why I healed the bleeding after that fight, because this hallway, as you might notice, is quite narrow. So an expanded hitbox from bleeding will cause problems almost immediately. Tag that plane. That plane is a problem character. Cool. All right, what's the other traps? Checking my notes on the slide. I don't have everything memorized, god knows. Way too complicated. The hidden gnarly dreamcast is your enemy here. Cool. Cool. I've had people try to learn this game who ask me, Punchy, how do you like remember all of this? I don't. I use notes. Use notes. Have it open on the other monitor. Okay, now we proceed into Scary Mary's Hide and Seek. Uh, inexplicable factor of this part of the game, we have to find four keys to open a door at the end in this maze. But your health is slowly draining all the while this is occurring. I don't think the game ever makes it obvious that this is happening. I don't think it's said in the dialogue, and if it, if it is, it must be in some oblique way. I don't remember. Either way, my health's draining. Cool, disappearing. I'm used to that happening at this point. That doesn't even surprise me anymore. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen, but I've seen it happen enough. I'm like, oh, this is happening. Mary can just do that. Don't worry about it. It's fine. I trusted that, and I really shouldn't have. We don't want to get caught by Mary. It'll start a combat. I have to win. Uh, and Mary is a frightening opponent. She deals a lot of damage very quickly. Turns out knives are really good at making people bleed when you get hit by them. So don't get hit by a giant knife. You know, my health is draining. Like, look, I, I, I entered this area with full health. And look, health is being lost. It is going. We. Oh, no, 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 no. Why is your hitbox so big, Mary? Why are you so wide, Mary? I didn't even get... Wow, I didn't even get a knockdown. That's cruel. This is the one thing we didn't want to happen. Oh, hello. I'm substantially turned around after that. Back on track. Know where I'm going now. Thought I could squeeze through the gap there, but alas, Mary's hitbox is much, much bigger than it looks. But it is okay. We escape the maze. I heal my bleeding. This is why we bought the extra doors. But just such an occasion. We have won the game of hide and seek. Well, the first game of hide and seek, anyway. There's a second game of hide and seek where Mary asks you to find her in a room full of objects. And the gimmick is just that you take damage from the objects until you randomly guess the correct one. However, because I know what track pattern has generated, I know the solution to this one as well. This one generates along with the trap pattern. So I immediately know that I'm on pattern C, it's the glasses. We shall now begin the Mary fight. So the goal here, I'm gonna get behind her, do a full string, and then I'm gonna do a full string again, and I'm gonna hope the third hit gets a knockdown. Mm, I traded. Not ideal. 
Okay, but I backed it up, got the knockdown. You wanna run you wanna run the Okazeme loop on her. Just nothing but Oki. Clean. I traded once, but that ended up working out. You get that knockdown, you can loop the knockdown. Erico is a vortex character. That went well, it does not always go that well. There is a property of the third hit of where it gets a knockdown, where sometimes it just doesn't work properly. Anyway, enough about that. Uh, time to play Jump Rope. Uh, we must jump the rope ten times, and I would like to stress that the delay on this is incredible. Press. 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 It's really something. Uh, for number eight, I seriously just matched the button. I have found that to be significantly more reliable than any other approach. Trying to actually time that is for fools. Just mash. Right, so now we have to fight Cash Man. He's the big head of the department store. See, he's the big cash spider. He's made of cash, but he has infinite health. That's a problem for us. I can't kill infinite health. I'm going to escape up his pile of money into the park's control room. There's an employee back here who gets distracted on by a phone call with his girlfriend. So I'm going to steal the remote control for the spider. Because remember, this is an amusement park. It's all fiction. It's all made up. Nothing's real. All we made this one up. Not this time. Not this time. It's fiction. It's a pure fabrication. This one was invented by a writer. So I'm gonna bash Cashman's head into this wall four times, and that's 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 how you win. People always ask me, what happens if you make Cashman attack Erico? You die. Don't do that. <laughs> you lose the video game. And that's Killer Department Store 1. Destroying Cashman causes a fire in the building, so and then we get evacuated by a helicopter, and that's how the level ends. Oh, someone asked me earlier and I didn't... The thought lodged in the brain, but I didn't actually answer it. Why do the levels in this order? You have to. It's a linear game. The, the levels open up one after the other. So why does infinite health go away? Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is Killer Man. This stage is a murder mystery. Let's go. Kevin's stratagem returns once more. Kevin is the optimal pick in this level for reasons that will not become apparent until the very, very end of the level. He's better in the boss fight, is the short version. So we have ample time to appreciate Kevin's stanky leg animation even more. Pick up the horror monitor. The code for the store is the employee number of the dead body in there that I didn't even get on camera. Oh, the draw of why all these characters go to this uh, deadly theme park in the first place is that there's a $100 million prize for, uh, for completing all of the attractions without dying. They're in it for the money. Money. Except sometimes it's a million and sometimes it's a hundred million because translation is not consistent, which is very funny. So in the Killer Man level, there is a missing Killer Man costume that starts running around killing all of the park employees, and we're now like exploring the back of the park. It becomes a very meta level, where props and items from past levels start appearing again. There is also a reporter called Jorg in this level. We need to save Jorg in order to receive the good ending, but we also don't at the same time. I will explain later. <laughs> Right now, I for first order of business, I gotta figure out what pattern I'm on. What am I doing? What am I doing with this? What are you doing, like? That is pattern A.
So, blood stain. All right. Move this way, move to toilet. Toilet is friend. Love it here. Love the toilet. I'm threading a precise line here to get through obstacles without triggering their trap radiuses. There is an exact spacing for that. You'll have to take my word for it. Because that, that looks like nothing. It looks like I just ran forward, but there is like a there's a specific there's a specificity to it. Specificity, specificity. Right. There we go. English is hard. I can do that. I speak this language. Uh, I'm gonna tag this fight. This is a fight with Mary, but if I tag the fight in advance, she'll never turn around and actually start fighting me. And I can escape spot free. This brown can is a trap, and then I don't need to track I don't need to tag anything else until I get out of this room if I can cut the line correctly. Move here, move like this. Uh, yep. Hey presto. I'm off. How did I find out what scares correlate to what puzzle set? Two weeks of testing over and over again. I streamed the entire... Pr I did two weeks of nothing but resetting your bleed levels over and over again and taking notes. I worked it out manually. It was quite the process. Anyway, we've escaped the loop of that basement and gained an ID card and a shotgun. The shotgun is the important thing. Often fail eight, does each character have different senses? No, every character has the same senses. They're how you identify traps in the environment. Every character has the same ability to detect traps and items. The sixth sense you see is triggering here because it's reacting to the axe item that I could pick up as a melee weapon, but I am not going to swing it, so I'm not going to pick it up. I want a gun. I have a gun. Gun is better. Usually. Depends. So we're backtracking out here because we're backtracking out to Yorg who is investigating the dead body. Also, someone mentioned this. Yorg is a real person. Uh, Yorg over here is voiced by the real life Yorg who worked, I think, at the... I can't remember what his role was exactly. I think he was at like the... like. ER on the English side of things, I forget. Either way, he was friends with the game's director, uh, Shinya Nishigaki, and so he put him in the game, like, as a character. And he voices himself. And I need to save him in order to get the good ending. Self-insert in my Dreamcast horror games, mwah. There's another dead body. The mystery of Killer Man deepens yet further. Except it's not really, because I'm kind of skipping most of the cutscene. I would love to show you guys the full mystery of Killer Man in like a complete form. Uh, however, uh, they're quite long. It would if I if I showed all the cutscenes in this run, it would like double the run. Did I not tag that? I thought I did. Ouch. That's a lot of damage. That's why I bought spares in case I beefed it. Uh, I'm on pattern A. Sorry, that kind of discombobulated me. I really thought I got that. No, Killer Man is not a joke. Killer Man is like the name of an actual character in this game. He's Killer Man. Killer Man is Killer Man, notoriously. Now I gotta navigate through this part of processing instead. These rooms are char Killer Man's level is characterized by very big rooms with very sparsely placed traps. All right. That works. 
I think so. Okay. I'm like running low on oh, adrenaline right. a bit, so I'm trying to be a bit more sparing with it. And this bit. I have to save York, but I also don't have to save York. I will get to it. I will get to it. Patience, people. Patience. We witness another person being killed by Killer Man. They just kind of fly in from off screen. They're dead. All the workers back here are getting killed by Killer Man. But who is Killer Man? Who could it be? Could it be York? Could it be the manager, Cunningham? Could it be you? Could it be me? It could even be Killer Man. Think about it. See if you can figure it out. You know, from all the evidence I'm not showing you. I'm sorry, if I it, it really would take like an extra 40 minutes to show all of it. He's not quite dead, and there's one spare Killer Man costume, but not THE Killer Man costume. Don't get mean by the ladder hitbox, don't do it, don't do it, didn't do it, excellent. Trying to actually grab that ladder to climb up it is remarkably finicky. asks who is Killer Man, but no one asks how is Killer Man. That line of thinking will get you there. Okay, but now, actually, we get to choose for ourselves who Killer Man actually is. Who could Killer Man be? Could it be Yorg? Could it be Jason? Could Killer Man, in fact, be Killer Man? Or could it be Player? Abnormality led you to buy this game, is what that text says, by the way. Which, fair enough, mate, sure, I'll cop to that. Now, at the moment, Yorg is sort of with us in, like, the cutscene pocket dimension where characters pop out to give, like, peanut gallery commentary on the events of the level so far. So Yorg is currently alive and well with us. You know, in sort of, like, that JRPG party fashion where he'll, like, pop out of you. You know what I mean. You've played a video game before, right? You, you guys know how video games work. Y'all ever heard of video games? Uh, whatever. That's the only scare in the morgue in this pattern. Right. This this area is massive and the patterns, the traps are dotted out very infrequently. Uh, on the Japanese version of this game, there is no music in the morgue. They added a track to this in the American version. Uh, the first time I played the Japanese version of this game, I honestly thought my disc was broken or something for the lack of music. And apparently so did a lot of people, so that's why they changed it. So here we get a cutscene where Yorg is kidnapped by zombies. Like they grab him and they pull him away in the cart up there. We're going to escape from zombies like a normal person and use a helicopter. Yorg wasn't clever enough to do this. Now the cutscene happens here actually. Got in the wrong order. There's Yorg. What was that? I don't think those were costumes. Those creeps were real. Hey! Goodbye. And you're gonna die. So Yorg is now somewhere resting in a cart in this giant morgue, and if we don't find him, he will die. Which is bad. We don't want that, because that would give us not the good ending. We're going to let him die. There are methods. So... If we got Killer Man's, if we got the answer to the Killer Man puzzle correct, there is a correct answer. And Yorg is alive at the end of the level. You can gain a million dollars as a bonus. 
when a character dies in a level by way of not being saved, uh, you can buy them out from the visitor bank for three hundred and seventy-five dollars. Three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. It's a big number. It's it's the six-digit number. I. It's three a.m. for me. Please cut me some slack. So the question of routing good ending becomes a case of, is it worth saving Yorg and claiming the million dollars and using that to buy out both Randy and Michelle and skipping their saving sequences instead, or allowing Yorg to die and buying him out instead for 375000 Because if you skip his money, you only got enough money for one save. You'd have to save the other two manually. And so the math of the problem works out that Jorg, in fact, does take so long to save, it is actually faster to just let him die and save the other two. Because uh, if we were going to save him, we would jump off here and do this whole, like, thing where we go around the top of the area and blah de blah It's surprisingly long-winded. This room is massive. Yep, you can just- you can just pay to cheat death. You can just pay to cheat death. But the price is high. There isn't enough money in the game to do it more than, like... Again, there's not enough money to do it more than once if you don't get the Killer Man bonus. And in order to get the Killer Man bonus, you need to save Jorg in the first place, so it be the, it becomes those... Those become the options. That becomes the routing consideration for good ending. And buying out a character from death via the expensive method, as far as the game cares, is perfectly valid for good ending. So that's why we have to save Yorg, but at the same time, we also don't. No encounters? You just walk the long, long room? Yeah. I mean, I ducked an encounter at the end there by hugging the left wall. But other than that, there, it really is just this big... It, it's, it's like a maze, right? It's a maze-type room. There would be encounters if I didn't take the shortest line possible. But anyway, we've escaped the big morgue maze, and I'm now going to fight... Killer Man, who, as it turns out, the correct answer to who Killer Man is, is Killer Man. Killer Man is in fact Killer Man. Now you know. So the advantage of Kevin's strategy is that when Killer Man does this point-blank like burst attack, Kevin's dodge is actually fast enough that he doesn't get hit even at point-blank range. It's very active. Darts up fast, and you can shoot quicker. If Eriko tries to do this strategy while being this close, it won't work. Her dodge doesn't start up fast enough. But with Kevin, you can keep him in the loop for as long as need be. No, nope. the trade was fine. I killed him. Favorable trade to secure the kill. No bonus. Kevin. No bonus. But because we didn't save Yorg and we didn't get the correct answer to the Killer Man puzzle, no bonus. But it's okay, we visit the Visitor Bank, friendly aftercare, buy out Yorg for 375,000 bones, and we're good to go. Yorg is now alive and well. And now in our party. We have successfully rented a Yorg. And now we're going to Toy Hunter. Subtitle, Inda Goes to Hell. Toy Hunter is an experience. And for a treat, I'm going to use Yorg. I'm going to use Yorg for this level. Yorg actually has a favorable properties, which is the he has a high adrenaline stat, which makes it very hard to run out if you pick him for good ending. But he isn't, like, strictly speaking, better than Kevin or anything. It doesn't matter that much. You know, for fun. His dodge is also cheaper, I guess. Which, I, that probably actually is, like, a real advantage. The character you pick in Toy Hunter itself doesn't really matter very much because of what will happen in about five seconds. But the character you pick for Toy Hunter will determine who you fight the final boss with, and that does matter. So we go into here, 
cutscenes happen that will now explain it, it explains like the tagging system again for some reason but there's also like how traps are now story events and so getting hit by traps is good because they don't hurt you but the story but we want to skip the story so we want to tag them anyway anyway we're now like woody indiana jones woody indiana toy story jones tagging these story traps because that functionally is skipping a cutscene now for how the game works all of a sudden Uh, this is where a divide in the localizations take place because the English dub calls this character Cork. And this game doesn't have a Japanese dub. It's been English text with sub uh, English voice with Japanese subtitles. Uh, but the Japanese text calls the character Inda, like Indiana Jones. So the Japanese version manages to have both. It's like, is it a Toy Story joke? Is it is it an Indiana Jones joke? The answer, yes. The correct answer is yes. Right, from here I can now ascertain what trap pattern. There are still random traps in this level. They don't show up as frequently. Ooh, pattern C. Novel. Yep. I can tell right away that that's pattern C. I have not done pattern C in a while, which is not great. Challenging. Yep. So we are Toy Indiana Jones, and we've just come back from Mexico to our loving wife named Sexy Doll. She is a doll with a giant butt. But unfortunately, the kid that owns the toy dies and takes Sexy Doll to hell with him when he died. Because that is what happens when a toy goes to goes in the casket with its dead this this part of the game's actually really messed up I, I i'm to what extent i should describe this is currently weighing on my brain i'm going to tag this fight so that i don't get killed by these monkeys ow don't hit me in the face. Mess up this, please. Eww. Health weighs on my brain somewhat. Uh, in a cutscene that I'm going to skip by tagging it, uh, an evil hell version of Sonic the Hedgehog descends from hell and taunts us for not being able to be with our toy wife. That's real. I didn't exaggerate that in the slightest. It's a hell version of Sonic the Hedgehog. His name is Zodic. There is, if it sounds like I'm ever making something up or describing something glibly for a joke, I am not. Illbleed is just like that. It's just that kind of game. Pattern C, this fight is in this corner instead. Which unfortunately starts me behind the two gun individuals. What a smooth dodge. Gotta tag this. So Cork right now is currently exploring the city on his own, like the toy city. Uh, he is depressed because that feel when no toy wife. Oh, come on. That stinks. All right, see, this is what happens when you get into a fight with any character that's not Eriko and you don't tag it in advance. Uh, they crawl around on the floor for 10 years while enemies kick you in the butt. That felt really rude. I don't, I don't agree with that. I did not think I was close enough for that to count. Come on, man. I disagree with that. I mean, I'm sincerely annoyed by that. Like, no. Fights on like the other side of the street. Go away. Anyway, we get to the egg bar. Newly divorced Indiana Jones uh, fights eggs in the egg bar. And it turns out that when you fight people in a bar in the real toy world, uh, you get arrested. So now Indy goes to jail. 
Indy goes to jail. We are we are going to jail right now. This is this is me walking to my jail cell. I should probably be counting the number of cells I'm walking past because I need to for trap purposes. So we have committed a crime. Yep. Yep. Now we must pay the court a fine or serve our sentence. We choose to serve our sentence, which, as it turns out, is the death penalty. Yep. But actually, Cork's feeling really good about this because if you know if he dies, he can go to hell and meet with his toy wife. Yeah, there's, there's upsides to everything in Illbleed. Now we are in jail proper. We meet with Potadon. He is definitely not a Buzz Lightyear type character. But he is currently embedded in a wall. Potadon wishes to help us on our quest to find our toy wife. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna just describe the whole thing. <laughs> I'm just gonna describe the whole thing. Uh, did I tag this before? Yes. Good for me. Fill him up with gas. This is where Podidon's like, hey, you know, if you get if you get uh, killed, it's great. You can go to hell and be with your toy wife. So Cork is like, hey, great. What a great idea. Uh, and this is where the game tests you to see if you were paying attention to the cutscenes because it gives you three execution methods, but two of them will just hurt you. We were not sentenced to death by the guillotine or by shock chair, it was by hanging. So that's the correct one you have to interact with. If you interact with the other ones, they just hurt you. But in this cutscene, Potadon interrupts the execution. Yep. And we instead fall down into the sewers. Well, you see, it transpires that if you die by regular methods, you simply go to regular hell, which is not the ideal situation. Regular hell is bad. Like, that's just hell, man. What you need to do is go to toy hell. Toy hell is distinct in the Illbleed universe. Are you keeping... Are you understanding the law here, chat? This will be on the test. And the only way to go to toy hell is to be buried with the owner of the like the, to the 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 person who owns you the toy owner and so Cork Inder heads to the city in search of a frail child who will hopefully die soon once again this is real that is <laughs> that's the plot that's what is occurring right now But first, recently ghost and so on increase in this town. As for the children, to be careful. So we peep in this window, we find a sufficiently frail looking child. Uh, we revive Potadon using a Potadon chip into a different Potadon, and the two of them work together in a cutscene that I skipped for epilepsy reasons, where they kill a child. <laughs> they give a child an epileptic fit and they die. <laughs> that we can be buried with them and go to toy hell. It's not a, like... I didn't write this. I just... I didn't write this. I did not write this game. I had nothing to do with this. I am just the person playing it. But now, we are in toy hell, we can go to toy hell, and we can fight evil Sonic the Hedgehog for my toy wife.
So yeah, this fight, uh, you shoot Sonic the Hedgehog, rings pop out, he's invincible during spin dash, which sucks. You shoot the rings that fall out of him to do damage to him, so that way he has no rings left. Unfortunately, the, the particular the spread, the clustering of the rings is random. So this is a heavy luck component of the run, is how lucky do you get fighting evil Sonic the Hedgehog? Personally, I think evil Sonic the Hedgehog is a bit of an oxymoron. Sonic the Hedgehog is inherently evil. It landed like in the corner. Okay, I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. He's dead. I have killed Sonic the Seat. Illbleed killed Sonic the Hedgehog well before the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog did. So like they 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 ain't even they're late to the party, bro. And with that, Hawk reunites with his toy wife in hell. And everything is good. Now you might be thinking Everything is distinctly not good. What the hell just happened? It's over now. I will accept no further questions about that level. We are done with that. Final boss. Once you have completed all of the levels, the way to the Renwood Museum opens, and this gives you a choice of three final bosses. Uh, we are going to challenge it with Yorg because, as I said earlier during Killerman, male characters have better dodges and they shoot gun better. And Yorg is, notably, a male character. So he also has those advantages, and his dodge is technically cheaper. So it's actually, like, in terms of heart rate increase, when you dodge, your heart rate goes up. So there are three bosses to choose from. The Cashman Spider, Bull Stinger, which is a reference to the studio's previous game, Blue Stinger. Uh, and Oh No Man. Oh No Man is way too difficult. Bull Stinger is, like, the happy medium. Uh, Cashman is the easiest, but he takes too long to fight, because he can kind of, like, hide on the ceiling and stuff. So what you want to do is stick close, Time your dodges when you get for the attack. And don't get got by those, like, zero-frame startup jumps. Too fast. I don't want this guy to jump around too much, so I'm sticking close to him, but sometimes he'll just jump up point-blank range, and those are, like, the worst. That was a lot of damage. I just did a lot there. That's the point. That's dangerous. Those point-blank jumps, they, like, he does damage on the way up, and it's very hard to react to that. Time will be coming up when this guy is dead, which will probably be happening relatively soon, because I'm kind of trashing this guy, actually. <laughs> He's got, like, one tick of health. All right. Sweet. Good fight. Time in... Now. That's time. GG. Ah. Uh, I have won yes. the $100 Excellent. million. Dollars. Fantastic. <laughs> I haven't heard this much excitement in a long time. <laughs> <clears throat> Very well, then. I shall present you with one hundred million dollars. One hundred million dollars. Here for the fanfare is the Michael Reynolds Orchestra. And for our victory, we receive the Michael Reynolds Orchestra, which you may notice is four gifts of the same dudes repeating. <laughs> that, that's the orchestra right there. That's that's all and you need. There's my money. Where's my money? This is what GDQ pays me for a hotfix appearance. One hundred million dollars. That's what I'm worth. That's because he did ill. That, that's how it goes. Exactly. Ilby is in such high demand. How much it costs to get an American copy of the game? <laughs> Congratulations. Good luck. Uh, bye bye. Good luck. Bye bye. And. We go to credits. I can't remember, can you go straight to the, uh, the end? We have to watch the credits. Unfortunately, the no, end, right? you can't skip the credits. Oh, uh, we can probably watch those a little bit, probably, see see the ending here. The ending is worth it, but unfortunately I can't skip directly to it. You know how yeah, that long... Wasn't, that wasn't the good ending, we haven't seen the good ending, you have to sit through the credits. Hey, do you know how long the credits take? It's a couple of minutes. Ah, uh, we should be good, we can talk a little bit about the, uh, the general stuff. Alright. Uh, first Go off, cool. uh, any shoutouts you want to give, and if anyone wants to follow you, we're going to follow you. 
you can find me at Twitch TV slash Punchy. I have been running this game lately. Uh, I think I'm probably still going to run it a bit more. So if you enjoyed this run and want to see more of it, come over. Come over to my channel. I think I want to go for a, a 115 in any percent. I'm like five seconds out from that. Uh, I'd also like to shout out the other runners of this game. Uh, we have Umbrella Joe, Abby's Corner. It's a small community. <laughs> it's like not that many. I, re I learned this game recently. Although I don't know if I've ever seen anybody running the board. I think you did. But I don't, I don't remember. I know I ran it, but I just keep Yeah, this, it's I all, all the whole Illbury community, all three of us. You know, it's been fun just like finding stuff with people. Because obviously, uh, I haven't done all. I've, I've done a large majority of the work on this run. I will be like proud of myself about this one. This, this run is like, this run, this route is mostly the product of me spending weeks of work chipping away at it. But people have helped here and there, pointing out like little things like, oh, you can dodge this here. Like that in the first level, like squeezing through the tables, uh, that was found by another runner. The strat where I clipped through the wall using the bed to drop down, that was found by a random YouTube commenter who left a comment on one of my speedruns like two years ago and was like, I found this while I was playing this game years ago. Do you think this could be helpful? And I was like, yeah, I think it can be helpful. <laughs> Mysterious, like, random YouTube commenter, like, like with a name that's like first name, last name, string of numbers as well. It's like the last thing that you would expect to actually contain useful info. What a champion. Champion poster. I really want to mention as well, just as someone who uh, learned old lead uh, using Punchy, because uh, he has a whole guide on YouTube. Oh yeah, that's true. And it uh, goes over every single route in the game, all the A, B, C routes for every level. Uh, it explains, yeah. like, hey, keep an eye for this, here's what you do. And then you just, like, you can write these down on your own, like, piece of paper as you learn them uh, by watching this and they have them explained to you. And then when you're running the game, you just take note of what you're on and then you kind of just play it from there and then you get more comfortable as you go on. Yeah, I did, I made a video tutorial to, like, because the information is very dense. This is still, like, I won't sugarcoat it, I don't want to be like, oh, you know, if you want to pick up this game, check out my video tutorial, it's really easy. There's a lot you got to know. But I did take the time to organize the information in, like, the most visually immediate way I thought possible, because I didn't want this information to entirely live in my head forever. So if you want to pick up this game, the info is out there. I, I have put it out there. I made a whole video tutorial series that shows you everything you would need to know across all three patterns. If you want to learn this game, you can. It's a fun run. It is quite dense. There's a lot to know. But it makes it quite rewarding, I think. I think so as well. It's kind of a neat thing, because uh, I think this is the uh, third time I had Elbleed on for the uh, the birthday show. But uh, this game has really evolved, just in the, like, how we've had it on. I don't think the first year had the Out of Bounds, the second year had the Out of Bounds, and then this year had Kevin Strats. Yeah, Kevin and York. Kevin, Maybe Kevin and York next didn't year we're going to find something else, I bet. Watch. We're going to find another trick next year that's going to be wildly strange. Finally, maybe we'll find a use for Michelle. I don't know. She's shorter. Maybe there's something to that. Anyway, here's the good ending. Everyone having fun on the How beach. How are going to spend a million bucks? I bought 385 different kinds of Freddy dolls. And I still have a lot left. He bought Freddy dolls. I invested in the stock market. You really trust the stock market? I don't know. I think so. <laughs> I love that line. Erico. Lenny Manella like choked the line in the booth and they she didn't do a second take. She just goes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but they kept the line. Hey, Erico. Anyway. Are you thinking of your secret love or something? Maybe it's me. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind that at all. <laughs> is that the tutorial from Kingdom Hearts? Nah, it's Besaid Island, mate. It's different. Learn the law. I'm going back to Illbleed. What? 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 She's going back to Illbleed. This sets into motion the chain of events that leads into New Game Plus and the true ending. Mm, if she goes, which has not been done on the hotfix and probably yeah, never will be. Yeah, a 15-minute like, wait is kind of a hard uh, hard sell on? for that one. If there's a 15-minute wait, you have to wait for Kevin to die in the true ending route. And there's other reasons, like... I, I don't know. I don't know, man. You know, you know what I mean. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I mean that one. Like that one, you could argue, but like it's really the 15-minute wait is like, all right, what are yeah. we doing for 15 minutes? 
Yeah. It's a bit much. She didn't know what you're gonna have. Or it's, uh... You know? Yeah. Anyway, uh, Illbleed, uh, punch you I love you all. Before we go, you have anything else you would like to add? Uh, this game's great. I have enjoyed running this for your birthday hotfix every year. It's always encouraged me to push the time down. It's been a funny, funny side effect is that every single time he puts this game on, I get a PV. That has been a non-trivial factor in pushing this route to be more optimized every time. <laughs> so, you know, say thanks. Right now, thanks for having me. It probably happens again next year, so I'm just saying, like, no promises. Like, I, you know, things could happen in the year, but, like, assuming nothing strange happens, it probably happens again next year. <laughs> All right. I like Elbleed. I've been pushing this game as like a the speed game in terms of like you like you know watching it for three years now. <laughs> speed game of the century. I like watching it. It's fun. I like doing it. If you guys enjoyed Elbleed, once again, check me out at Twitch TV Punchy. Hope you had a good time. All righty. Uh, that being said, we still have two more games to you for the rest of the night. Uh, both are gonna be quite fun in their own ways, and. Uh, yeah, we're going to be right back very quick to set that up, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, everyone. Welcome back from the break. Hope you enjoy the run of Illbleed. Honestly, I just really like Illbleed uh, as a game. It's had a lot of history in the Hotfix channel for Speedruns in the Crypt, and I'm really happy that we've been able to show it off every birth that uh, for those of you who do not know, that was actually originally uh, one of the first games we had on the show. Uh, first ever show we had on the Hotfix was Oni Musha, Illbleed, and Fatal Frame. So, uh, I know uh, Illbleed has definitely made more appearances than the other two, but I really enjoyed being able to share that game with you. And it's actually really trippy in how much it's advanced over time. Uh, anyway, though, we still have two games for you for the rest of the night. Uh, the next game is going to be a very fun game to watch, because it's going to be an area of horror you don't get to see very often. I like, I like watching the game get played. It's very infrequent because there's not a whole lot of runners in this game. There's definitely a few. Uh, a few of them have actually have been on the Hotfix before. But uh, we're going to be revisiting it. It is going to be Juon the Grudge. And this is a Wii Horror game. It will be done by Jew Horse. Wee! I am Juon the Grudge! <laughs> First of all, happy birthday, Eric! Uh, second of all, hello! I'm using a face cam for once! Uh, hi, my name is Juju Horse. Welcome to Ju on the Grudge. I have two copies. Uh, if you if you're wondering why, one of them is the uh, the NTSC version or the US version. The other one's the PAL version. The PAL version just looks like this. Uh, thanks to uh, one of the GQ chat mods for gifting me this game, Yorki Desu. Uh, but yeah, uh, welcome to Ju. Uh, oh, welcome to Ju on the Grudge. Uh, this game is on the Wii, and I'm gonna be playing the game like this. That's all you need to know. That's how I speed run the game. I don't know why. I just have to run the game like this. By um, the way, uh, I just want to mention, uh -huh. that is a real uh, game cover. You can Google it. It is the PAL version of the game. It's so weird. It looks like an indie coffee shop album cover. <laughs> and it's such yeah. a trip. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, I do want to mention about this as well. Uh, I read this game on, on X Hotfix like two years ago. Uh, running the same category as uh, uh, any percent. Uh, well, two years later, I'm 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 back running any percent again on uh, on his birthday. So, yeah, <laughs> this it's is also a fun the category to watch. I like watching it. It was a yeah. fun one. This is also the third year that I'm on your hotfix for your birthday as well. The last two I ran other games. I think I ran I ran like Saw Two, and then I ran Madison. And now I'm running Jew on the Grudge. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you like to bully me into running this game, but sure. Uh, but uh, something about Wii horror games are a blast to watch. I just want to say that right now. True, like, you don't true, get, true. So little Wii horror. There's only a few. There's so little of it. When you get to watch it, it's a treat. I think Chad's gonna enjoy it as well. Oh yeah. By the way, what's your zodiac sign? Is it Virgo? Uh, Virgo. Virgo. Okay, uh, we're gonna go with male Vogo today. <laughs> August 30th. Uh, yeah. yeah. We'll go with Virgo. We'll go with male Vo Virgo. If you're wondering what is the, the profile all about, it 
basically does nothing. It, it barely does anything other than it I think you'll scare me. me you in different phrases, yeah, it just insults you. But yes, uh, I'm gonna go into the game really quick. Uh, three, two, one go so there are four episodes in uh this whole thing five if you actually go for true ending we are not gonna go for true ending uh we're gonna go for any percent uh true ending is to collect all the items in each episode uh which i don't <laughs> really do that i don't know why but i don't really do that so i'm just gonna go with uh any percent for now uh this is how you actually move in the game i had to point my Wii remote uh <laughs> on the sensor and my sensor is like far but like, it's on my monitor, so I have to be like a, a good distance away from my uh, from my monitor to uh, the uh, to my Wii mode. So yeah, there's that. Also, yeah, you can see uh, Hoshio, uh, which is one of the antagonists, I guess, in the um, Juan, uh, well, I guess movie or game as well. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, uh, we are in the first episode, we are playing as Erica, if I'm not mistaken, so there's that. And the gist of this game is to, like, go around places and just, like, you know, collect all these items. Uh, no, not collect all these items, you have to, like, go from point A to point B, and then die. Th that's the, the gist of the whole episode of the game. Also, and it should be mentioned really quick, because I bet you're all wondering, uh, yeah, why isn't he running? He is running. Yeah, this is the the, the the literal speed of uh the character. Like every single character this in this game is literal speed. Yeah. And I'm also holding B, so like uh on your Wiimote at the back of it, uh, it's a B button. I'm holding that button this whole entire time. The the, the this button. This button right here, I'm holding that button the whole entire time. Let's see, other um, fun facts. Uh, no nunchuck support, so you can't move with a nunchuck. Uh, B is forward and back is backward. Uh, yeah, and then, uh, what? Shaking your Wii mode around is a 180 degree turn, and that's about it. Also, you get- Oh, jump scare right here! But also, there's, like, quick time events as well, so you can actually, like, shake your- Your, um, Wii mode around. Uh, that's, uh, Kayako from- Juan as well, so yeah, there's that. So- yeah, we're in the first uh, area of the game on the first episode, which is the factory. Um, basically, what happens is that like Erica's dog went into the factory because she got ex uh, got excited. So there's that. Also, yeah, jump scare simulator. Bam! Somewhere, bam! There you go. Uh, Hoshio just comes out of nowhere. Is it Hoshio or Toshio? I think it's Toshio. I, I don't remember, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, we get a, a Toshio or Hoshio jump scare. Um, there's gonna be like a random jump scare of uh, Hoshio coming around if it happens. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the only random jump scare you get in this game, which is a uh, Hoshio jump scare in this part only, and that's it. Really weird uh, thing about the jump scares in this game, um, they're multiplayer. So if you plugged in oh, a yeah, second yeah. controller, player two can mess with player one. And that was like the big mm -hmm. gimmick for this game. I have never tried it, but apparently it's a thing. Oh god, it's it, fun, it but, uh, sucks. <laughs> it sucks. It's basically I'm, you get like someone with the Wiimote and you have to trust them to uh, not press the button on their Wiimote. And then, yeah, that's about it. So if... Like, if your friend presses a button on the Wiimote, a jump scare would happen. That's about it. And then it just repeats itself. For like, the entire episode. But also, hey, you don't really get the, the jump scare for that part as well. It's a random jump scare uh, that Hoshio would actually pop up, pop up uh, in the screen. Like, randomly, but I didn't get it, which is good. But yeah, this is literally the walking speed or the, like the running speed of the game. So you guys are gonna see like one kilometer per hour. <laughs> it's a speed really run. big flight of stairs, man. Come on. <laughs> we have to go for four episodes of this. We can't and all move at lightning speed. Yeah, but uh, I do want to bring up one game as well, which uh, has like. Pretty much like the fast amount of speed, which is calling. That's another Wii game that like requires you to have like a, a nunchuck, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you have to have a nunchuck, and it 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 
goes around places like super quick. This one, however, that's what it is. You also point the remote, uh, like the Wiimote, uh, onto the sensor to actually like move, like how you say, like aim, I guess I would say. As you can totally tell that I'm aiming at the moment. There you go. Uh, but yes, thank you for uh, bullying me into running this game again. <laughs> it is a classic game where you move at blistering speeds. I don't think I've seen a horror game where a character moves this quickly, in fact. The weird thing is that I got two choices. I was supposed to either run this game or uh, another game that like we both love, which is uh, Devotion. <laughs> See, we could have devotion, but we can't no, have no, no, one. No, you you told me, hey, Ju uh, hey, Joe, devotion or Juon? I, I think devotion is good. I mean, they, they, <laughs> Juon sounded more tempting. Like, Juon made yeah, more true, sense. True, true, true. But yes, uh... Yeah, I, I get to play this game again, and it's a, it's a fun little game that, uh... I bought, uh, all because this game is, like... Uh, this game was, like, $15 that I bought. And then if you look at the price right now, it's like $170 now. In like back then, I think two years ago, it was like, if you can sell it for like $80, now you can sell it for like $180, which is like a hundred dollar, like, uh, like a you know, hundred dollar, like. You kind of <laughs> worry that my copy, like, and I have to worry about my copy. I bought my copy years ago. I bought my copy like two years ago, two, yeah, two two three years ago because like someone was like wanting to sell their copy for like fifteen dollars and i didn't tell them it was eighty dollars i oh hey I we kinda... have a fun question in chat really quick does this Go. game take place underwater no they just move this quickly i wish it i wish it does <laughs> just uh pretty much the speed of me waking up this morning oh yeah here comes uh here comes a phone call right here because i have to pick up a phone call oh hello what hello Hello? Whoa! Hello! God damn! I am scared now. But yeah, you can actually hear the, uh, what, the, the groaning on your Wiimote as well, which is pretty cool of its kind. I didn't really know how innovative it was <laughs> that the Wii had, like, sound coming out from its Wiimote. You know, Joe, you helped me unearth, like, a core memory. I remember back when I was, like, uh, whenever the Grudge North American movie came out, I remember me and a lot of friends I knew would answer the phone with the, uh, the, like, <laughs> the, the noise. They mess with, me, mess with each other. <laughs> really? I see. Yeah, I mean, it's fun. Uh, anyways, I, I haven't been talking about the game at all because, like, this is literally, like, and, the, and the game. The game can speak for itself. It's truly <laughs> immaculate. Yeah. So, uh, we're coming up to, like, oh, God. Oh, uh, turn, turn. Thank you. Uh, we're coming up to, like, almost the end of the episode as well. There is, like, a few more stuff that I have to do before, like, uh, finishing it. Like, uh, meeting Kayako once again. Uh, we also do want to mention about... So, it's a weird thing because I mentioned about this in my own chat before. Uh, so, wasn't there, like, a Ring and Juon, like, movie? I never watched it, but yeah, it was, I think it was, uh, Sadako versus Kayako. And it came yeah. out, I think, in 2016. Yeah. Did they fight each other? I didn't I don't watch the movie. I don't yeah, actually know. I, I, I'm assuming I, I they don't had to fight each other, right? <laughs> Why would they be versus each other? <laughs> so I heard, like, at the end of the movie, which is a weird spoiler, that they actually combine together. That's that's what I would... <laughs> what? So that's Kayako right here. I had to do, like, a, uh, a quick time event right there. Uh, this is a skip that I didn't know at the time. So you turn 180 degrees and you just go to the elevator door and that's about it. Uh, initially, like, I walked towards the exit sign and then there was going to be, like, another quick time event. Um, so that saved me a lot of time and that uh, gave me uh, a good time save as well <laughs> right now. Hey, look! Our dog's back! I don't remember the dog's name, but the dog's back. But yeah, uh, basically, like, the story goes or, like, the episode goes that... Uh, Erica's dog actually got, uh, like, ran inside this, uh, factory, and then you had to search for your dog. And then you search for your dog, you found your dog, um, rip to that dog, by the way. So, this oh, actually no. brings me to a really, uh, neat thing that I don't, I don't, I can't hate the developers for this game at all. 
I know a lot of people like, uh -huh. like, oh, I can't believe the devs did this, right? Which, I, you know, talking about lore per second, for those of you who don't know... Um, wait, 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 by the know, way, scan meter and s sissy meter, by the way. <laughs> Look I mean, at how big my scan meter is compared to my sissy scared, meter as well. you're not a sissy duo. Keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, but... to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, but but basically, what say this... really quick. Sorry. <laughs> um, you go first, you go first, sorry. Yeah. So as I said really quick is with a Juon game, you get a really weird area because the lore is if you enter the house, you die. So no matter what happens, everyone's going to die. So how do you make a video game where you have a win condition when at the end of the day, everyone's going to die? Like you can't, it's hard to make that. Like the whole lore is that you die. Yep. <laughs> And you actually see throughout the game, it's like, oh, hey, I beat I beat the, the, the boss, the QTE, and then, oh, wait, I just died. You just died. Hey, but, yeah. like, different. Yep. Also, so, uh, this, uh, the scare meter and the sissy meter. Scare meter is how frantic you're moving the Wii. A sissy meter is how long you take. Yeah, so, basically, the faster you uh, finish the episode, the more scared you are. <laughs> So that's why my scare meter was like super all the way up while my sissy meter is like down. Because well, I'm not you're scared. You're not a sissy. Yeah. You it's have how fast. It's really how fast you are in the in, in the game that makes your scare meter super high. But yeah, we are in like this, the second episode, which is. But I need to rub this bit real quick and then uh go away because, you know, it's it's a speed strat. But yeah, uh, basically, um, we're in the second episode and the sec second episode is. Uh, another character called Mickey, I think. Is it Mickey? I, I don't remember. But it's uh, a girl who uh, is, like, in the hospital because of something. And then the hospital is, like, empty. Uh, so she has to investigate why the, the hospital is empty while also being a patient in here. I don't know what the relations of everyone in the game is, but isn't it fam family members or something? Yeah, you play as the the daughter, the mother, the son, and then the dad. The dad, I think. There's yeah. a true ending chapter, which would be the true ending. We're not doing that one any percent, but the true ending would be also be the daughter. Yeah, but yeah, uh, basically, like I I'm running any percent, but like there's a there's another episode which is a, a true ending, which you actually go into the Juon house, and uh, yeah, you you play as Erica again uh, from the first episode. So there's that. I don't remember the uh, the dad and the I, I don't the brother. The dad's the security guard. The uh, yeah. I, I don't even remember the name. It's dad's yeah, security guard. Yeah, I just guard. don't remember the name. Uh, the, the 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 brother is a uh, delivery, delivery guy. Then yeah, then the, the dad's like a uh, the uh, security guard later on in the game. Oh yeah, awesome. uh, black hat by the way. And then uh, hold on, <laughs> wait, wait for it. <laughs> Oh no, Catboy! <laughs> Catboy Hoshio. <laughs> uh, can I just do like this thank you very much? Uh, you were saying, by the way? Oh, um, so... All the jobs are kind of weird in how they get in the situations. Like, I get the mom, she's, uh, she works as a nurse. Nurses work brutal hours. Um, the dad's gonna be a security guard, and it makes sense he would have a late night shift. Uh, we're gonna look at the brother later, and I, I just want you to wonder why in the world he's gonna, be, like, be in the position he's in. Also, what oh, I did yeah, want to say true. as well is that, uh, I guess general props or shoutouts to Black Cats. Uh, they <laughs> kinda get a bad rap, so, uh, yeah, they're, they're just kindness. Consider they're bad nice. luck, but yes. Well, they're, they're nice, though. They're, they're lovely cats. They're not bad. They get a bad rap because of the bad luck thing. Hello? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, here comes uh, one of the pieces of paper. That's actually for a uh, true ending, but we're gonna skip that. Uh, also, quick time event well, uh, where uh, Hoshio actually runs around. We're, we're actually scared, as you can tell. <laughs> You're just doing oh, no. laps. He's just running around the table. It's like, yep, just gonna scare this dude. Yeah, but yeah, we get scribble fragment right here. Uh, we are supposed to be picking up scribble fragments for like, um, like the true ending stuff, but uh, we don't do that. Uh, there's gonna be like another scribble, scribble fra fragment that's gonna be coming up in the the men's bathroom, but uh, we're gonna skip that. 
So once I actually go into the stall with the very creepy hair at the bottom of the stall, uh, boom. Yep, uh, we're gonna skip that because uh, that doesn't mean anything to us. Uh, you... But also I have to look straight right here so that I don't get like moved around. There we go. Do you think that cat has a residency at this hospital, or do you think they like the, the Juan ghost brought the cat? Do you think Kayako just brought the I, cat? I, th I think they just brought the cat. I don't think like they it's it just a. Home. Yeah, I don't think it's just a residency because you know it, it, it's been it's just brought around later on as well. Anyways, Kayako is back, dude. My ghost waifu is back, but even though she's a mo she's a mom as well, I forgot about that. There you go. All right, let's go back to the door, and then we're gonna go down a flight of stairs towards the basement. And then I'm gonna walk towards a <laughs> like a, a hallway because it's gonna be a long hallway as well. Turn. There you go. And then we go down. Yay stairs! But later on we'll go up the stairs because there's gonna be one gimmick that uh. It's gonna be if if you have never watched a Juon like gameplay before, uh, feast your eyes on uh, one of the uh, cool gimmicks of the game. I say cool. Uh, speaking of gimmicks, totally we haven't cool. talked about it yet. Um, if you bet, bet some of you are wondering what's that meter on the bottom of the batteries? That's your health bar. If you run out of flashlight, oh, yeah. you die immediately. Yeah, you die <laughs> instantly, and like uh, the the death right. If you get a death. Uh, you you go all the way back to the start of the game. So if you ever like you play this game for like ten minutes, too bad your ten minutes was all wasted because you had to go back to the start of the episode. You had to replay it all over again, which I hopefully do not want to. That's why my estimate is like, I said my estimate is like forty five minutes, but uh, you know, X was, X was like, yeah, we're gonna graciously give you fifty minutes. Because We've why not? offered him the 50 minutes, that is, <laughs> that is how it went. If I, if I die, but, uh, like, if, if I die in one of the episodes, but, like, yep. Yeah. Um, basically, we're gonna go into, like, this part of the, the, the whole section at the moment. Basically, um, there is, if I'm not mistaken, like, uh, coffins in here. I don't know why they store coffins in the, it's probably in a morgue part. in the hospital, if I had to guess. Yeah, but, like, there's only three of them. It's not a big hospital, not a big morgue. Mm, maybe. Anyways, key! And we have to go to the rooftop. Uh, turn! There we go. I'm actually doing really well with the turning so far. <laughs> like, it's, so, it's really enough, I'm, I'm actually doing very well with the turning. But yeah, um, if you, are, if you guys are also wondering why did I pick this game up, uh, I blame Egg. I blame Egg for, like, most of the games that I picked up. Uh... He asked me, look, no, he was running like Jew on the Grudge one day, and I was like, yeah, I remember Jew on the Grudge because I watched uh, someone play Jew on the Grudge back in 2013. And then that prompted me to actually buy a Wii and the copy of the game because someone, someone sold, uh, someone sold their copy of the game or wanted to sell their copy of the game for fifteen dollars when you could have sold it for eighty dollars. So I, what, uh, I, is it I scammed them? I don't think I scammed them, right? <laughs> you got a good deal. I got a good deal, yes! I didn't tell them that it was $80, but they, they sold it to me for uh, $15. Uh, 15, 15 Singaporean dollars, which is like, what, $10, I guess? 10 US dollars, I would say? Oh no! I was, I was realizing, so, so the game, as a result of me playing games, you bought Saw 2 Flesh and Blood, which is a rough sequel to the Saw game, and you bought Juan, The Grudge, which, uh, we don't, talk about, we don't talk about Saw 2 Flesh and Blood, please. <laughs> we, don't t we, don't, we don't talk about why I bought an Xbox 360 in Saw 2 Flesh and Blood. Truly a great <laughs> video game investment. It's only, uh, only peak cinema. Oh no. Also, here comes the best monster in the game, by the way. It's just a lump of hair on the, on the ceiling. <laughs> Uh, but basically what we're gonna be doing right now is fencing with a f with a flashlight so hair is gonna come out uh, like a tentacle of hair is gonna come out and then I'm gonna like do fencing with the tentacle uh, tentacle hair 
One more. Lord that has fair play, by the way. Like, he just... <laughs> yeah, this is fencing. Yeah. Also, someone asked, is the Jew in your name for for Jew on? Uh, no. Weirdly enough, like, people call me Juho. Basically, Juho is just the full name of my actual name. <laughs> I just cut it short, and that's why. That's why, like, if, if anyone calls me Juho, it's literally my full name. But, like, yeah, I just cut to uh, Juho. And then, I, I guess I put the horse in there because I'm... I, I, horse, I guess. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, Egg always calls me, like, Hey, Peter, the horse is here. You're the horse, and you're here. Rude. Yep. Okay, let me go into, like, the rooftop real quick because I have to unlock this door. Here we go. All right, we're going to do, like, a, a, a really cool skip. You can see this guy right there. We're going to not look at that guy. It's goodbye. If you don't look at the guy, uh, you don't get a cutscene. That's how it is. You do a skip. Also, whoa, oh, person. Oh, no. No, please don't. Oh, there you go. Yeah, God. Anyways, stretcher. All right. So this is one of the, uh, this is the ending of it, I would say. Uh, but also at the same time, I had to do a quick time event. Uh, very cool quick time event as well. Here we go. Oh yeah, um, Toshio's back. He's gonna yeah, like <laughs> shove us. Wee, wee! I have no idea why. Oh no, we're on the ledge now. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's it. You may think that's it, right? That Toshio just lightly shoved us, almost wanting us to fall. Oh, wait, Kayako's here. It's fun! But this then is she's what gonna give us like, a big shot. So, if Toshio kills you, that's bad, and you immediately have to do the whole level again. If yeah, Kayako yeah, yeah. kills you, you win. Alright, you did it. Good job. <laughs> Yay! But yeah, uh, uh, if I missed the quick time event, I had to start that episode all over again, which uh, would take me about roughly 10 minutes, 11 minutes actually, because um, the second episode is actually the longest episode among the four episodes that we actually play. So we're done with like episode two. And then we'll go to episode three, which is the derelict uh, apartments, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. Oh yeah, okay. I need to spend my uh my pause button. I forgot so to now... mention about this. Oh uh, yeah, sorry. I now, forgot to now mention we about gotta this. Ask. And... Gotta Go. ask. Why in the world is this delivery man delivering in the middle of Oops. the night? Oh yeah, true. But then again, it's the last package of the day, right? This is like two a.m. True. <laughs> Maybe I don't know the hours of delivery men, but like I, I know they work hard, but they, they don't normally work till two a.m. Do they? Yeah, I actually, it's kind of the usual, uh, you know, like probably human hours. They're not. They, they don't have a graveyard shift. I get the nurse have a graveyard shift, but like the mailman's not coming to my house at two a.m. Right? Yeah. So basically, okay. Uh, I I do want to mention about this as well because uh, I didn't mention about it at the start of the game. You can skip cutscenes in this game. Uh, basically, the way on how you skip cutscene is that uh, if you play the game and then delete the save file that you have already played the the whole game, uh, you can skip cutscenes. If you have played, if you're playing the the save file for the first time, you cannot skip the cutscene until you play all the episodes. So that's how you actually skip the cutscenes. Uh, but the cutscenes doesn't really matter at all. It just tells you like, oh yeah, you're in this place. That's it. But yeah, we're playing as Ken. I, 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 I know the name now because I actually saw the name from <laughs> actually pausing. But yeah, uh, if you actually pause the game, it, it shows you like the, the, the bio or whatever it is, the synopsis of the person or the, the episode as well. So yeah, there's that. Also, apparently in chat, we have answers. Apparently, yes, deliveries do happen in the AMs. Okay, like at 4 AM, like 5 AM. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you can totally deliver packages and it's the end of the day anyways, like the like, last... I'm a graveyard shift worker, I kinda want more packages at 2am now, I'm not gonna lie to you, if I ever order something, I can get <laughs> it at 2am The order of the day anyways. 
You can get orders at like 2, 3 a.m. in the morning with like, I don't know, what b delivery app that you use for food. Although, I'm not gonna lie, alright, I don't think this guy is a graveyard shift worker, I just think he walks that slowly that he has to take, he gets overtime. He gets a lot of overtime from this. Also, really for the camera angle, you actually look at the, so you look at the, the apartment house like that close to the, uh, the wall. There, there are some like weird camera movements later on. I don't know how you would do that as a human being, but sure. So let me get this key. All right, padlock key. Um, basically, we're gonna be going downstairs later on. Uh, but also, oh no! What do we have in our hands? Was it a package? Or was it something else? Yeah, we throw the package, or Ken's gonna throw the package under the floor. It's gonna fog up. <laughs> like some ninja comes out of the box for some reason. It's Kayako. Oh yeah, here comes a quick time event again. Oh yeah, here comes the camera. The camera panning or the camera angle is like, Wee! <laughs> yeah, you would do that as well, huh? All right. Also, a better question: Did Kayako mail herself? Like, how did she plan that out? I don't did know. she did she ruin the package first or did she fully intend that? Because like that apartment was abandoned. I think it's like a person in the box. <laughs> Someone mailed a person in the box. <laughs> How long do you think Kayako had to wait for this world's slowest man to walk over to the delivery spot? Oh yeah. Hello Hoshio. Bye Hoshio. That's it. He's just ringing the doorbell like a like a polite human being. Oh, no. Polite ghost, I would say. The, that's a weird joke in my head that wants wants me to say he's as white as Casper. Oh, he is a ghost. Yeah, he is a ghost at all as, as well. But like, Casper's a friendly ghost. Uh, is Ushio a friendly ghost in the first place as well? He tried to murder you several times. He pushed you off oh, a yeah, building. True. I, actually, yeah, no, not friendly at all. Also, hands. You like hands that come come out of the floor? That's fun. All right. Uh, also, best ball in the game right here, best sound effect. Does your ball actually sound like that? It just goes quack, 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 quack onto the muddy floor. Is it either Anyways. a floor issue or is it a ball issue is my question. Like, what, which is causing that? I think it's ball issue. <laughs> I don't think balls would sound like that on mud. Do they? I don't know. Anyways, I like to think we're gonna go highly into... deflated and just filled with mud or something. True. Uh, anyways, we're gonna go into this part of the house, uh, or this part of the apartments. We're gonna go upstairs real quick just to actually get a key for our, the uh, the house or the, the apartment that we're gonna go to later on. But uh, yeah. Also, I like someone. Like someone earlier said that I'm sitting like Uncle Roger. I could sound like Uncle Roger if I want to as well, but like. <laughs> Anyways, we get a, a, a key. Surely nothing's bad gonna happen. Oh no! Jump scare! There you go. There you go. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're gonna get this key. We're gonna go all the way downstairs just to, uh, you know... Unlock this door! And, uh... New, new gimmick is gonna come up as well because, you know, um... They, they're gonna implement new gimmicks in the later part of the game as well. So, here comes uh, a new gimmick where I have to uh, point a, a, Wii, a Wiimote onto a, like a circle. Uh, I'm gonna stand right here real quick and then just like, I don't know, just wait for stuff to happen because, you know, there's a doorbell. Oh, <laughs> god. Nice house, by the way. Look at the house. Also, we're, 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 we're trapped. Because there's hair on the, there's hair on the door. All right, so basically right now we're gonna be hiding, but I had to do like a, a quick time event real quick. I forgot that there's always a quick time event over here. I usually miss that and I, I keep dying for some reason. But yeah, anyways, here, quick time event right here. Or I don't know gimmick right here. So I had to aim my Wii mode at the circle. And then, oh yeah, by the way, uh, my face when I have to play this game again.
Eck, why do you do this? My face when I had to play this game again. He's pogging. <laughs> Alright, that's done, right? Oh no! Hello, Hoshio! Oh yeah, he can do this like anytime. Bastard up with the wooden boards like that. Like, yep, that's it! All right, so we're coming up to the final part of the the episode as well. Uh, one more thing, scary trash bag. Ooh, it just jumps like that. But I'm totally say, scared. I think that's meant to be the dog from chapter one. The dog from chapter? No way. You get. I mean, it would make sense. The dog, they, though. Well, they, they, she, I mean, she bags up everyone. I don't know how she does it, but yeah, I'm pretty oh, sure she does bag up everyone. Yeah. And anyways. Uh, we're gonna go with one more credit time event as well. Uh, you can see me sh shaking my remote already because e this is the last good time event of the, um, of the episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is meows in front of your face. Meow! <laughs> He's warning you. <laughs> True. Uh, but yeah, you may think this is over. But wait! Spider Kayako! <laughs> Oh no! Okay. Like, uh, you just like a few lops on the ground? Yeah! It's fun! He does the uh, whole, uh, whatever it is, uh, whatever movie it was. Remember, uh, dying to Kayako is bad. Don't die to Kayako. Yeah. You know what you want to do instead? Hmm? What? You oh, want to die to Kayako. <laughs> oh yeah, that's different. <laughs> But, but, but good. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, she's gone. Oh no, she's back. And then you just like, get your neck cracked. Alright, so that's the third episode. Uh, final episode is going to be coming up pretty soon as well. Uh, and we are going to go into the security guard's off uh, office, I think. That's what it is. Oh yeah, someone did mention the uh, PewDiePie moment. I remember watching PewDiePie play this game. That's why I got inspiration to actually run this game as well. Like partially the inspiration of it as well is to uh, 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 to run this game is because of PewDiePie. So yeah. Um, last episode, which is the, uh, the security guard office around there. Uh, you play as a... Uh, I don't remember, is it Ken? No, 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 it's not Kenji. This one's another person, I just don't remember what the, the other person is. Let me see. Hero, there you go. He plays Hero. He's not gonna be a hero after <laughs> this episode. Uh, but yeah, basically what his uh, uh, what the episode is, this final episode, is that basically the uh, the generator is out and you're supposed to actually like uh, find out what's happening to the generator and stuff. And you actually try to find out what happened to the generator. And then Kayako comes to haunt us again. Wow, her eyes are just rolling like that. <laughs> but yeah, in this episode, we actually get to collect uh, three parts of a key. Uh, the key is actually like a, uh, actually like a pin number, so we have to collect like uh, like different pin numbers. Uh, also, uh, upcoming is a trick that I ha I have not done, or like I have not showcased, because uh, the last time that I showcased this game two years ago. Uh, you actually watch this cutscene, but um, this was actually found out by Mad Mad, if I'm not mistaken. It's either Mad Mad or Nerd Square. It's either one of them, honestly. But yeah, uh, basically, once you get this uh, pin code right here, if I actually get to pick up this pin code, this is going to be really hard for me to do, so hopefully I can do it. So you look up, and then you... You you walk through this area, you skip like a cutscene right here, and it's like it, you save like twenty seconds. But yeah, you literally save twenty seconds. Oh, so yes, I this is how I play. This is literally how I play this game. I lean back my I lean my chair back, point my Wii mode, and use my my knee as a support for my arm <laughs> to point an opposite arm. That's how I play, that's how I run this game as well. I don't know why, but this is how I run this game. It's optimal. 
is at least optimal enough for me to run this game. Uh, anyways, uh, I need to get that battery and hair. Whoa, that is scary. Uh, anyways, the next place that I have to go to is the women's bathroom, or is it the male's bathroom? It's the male's bathroom. Ooh, scary, Kayako. All right, male's bathroom. Hey, I hear meowing in the male's bathroom. I wonder what's that gonna be. Okay. Uh, move, move into the bathroom. Okay, so I need to point myself at a a, a weird angle, like that, because uh, if I point myself straight, it's gonna like 180 turn me around or like 360 turn me around, which is kind of weird. Also, yeah, Kayako's in the male's bathroom with us right now, and now I have to point my remote at the circle again. I don't know why we have to uh, literally. You know, I don't know why she has to literally come into the, the male's bathroom, though. Hopefully I don't die, though. The witness that I get is that I don't really point on the circle uh, as much as possible. It's, it's really hard to actually, like, move your Wiimote like that. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, uh, another pin that I have to uh, pick up right here. Here you go. A six! What comes after a six? Definitely not a nine, right? <laughs> Anyways, there you go. Yoshio was like at, in the mirror. You don't really see a glimpse of it, but you see a little bit of it on the, the bottom left corner of it. Um, anyways, one more... Uh, one more pin code, and then we are gonna go into the room that uh, we need to go. Um, do you have any comments, by the way? Because this is like a, a long stretch towards the end as well. Um, let's see about Juan here. Honestly, I'm surprised that there's actual skips in this game now. Like, I was. Yeah! <laughs> it was neat being able to see that you actually could bypass some of the animations. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the weird things about this game I do know to save time is that I think you need, like, I don't know if you can run this on a Wii U, but I, I definitely know, like, yeah, like, load speeds make a big difference if you have it, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I run this game on the Wii. I think Mad Mad ran this game on the Wii U. Hold on. You caught, you thought. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of these uh, jump scares, they're pretty brutal. If you die at all, you go back to the beginning of the level. Like, time loss in this game is massive. Alright, I'm back. <laughs> I suppose it's one of the upsides of running this game, though, that, you know, for the most part, as long as you don't fail the QTEs, it should always be about the same length. But, yep. realistically, sometimes the game might bug out and QTEs won't hit, and... It's a bit rough. Also, I think this is meant to be a college. No, it's a it's an actual office. I think it's an actual office. Okay, I, I don't remember I what kind of office it is, but I remember the dad's security guard. Yeah, I don't think you you get these kind of stuff in a college door, a uh, college place. Do you? I don't know. You get you mannequins. Could, yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. Yeah, maybe if it's like a like a design school, a school or like fashion school, whatever it is, art school. Yeah. There we go. Uh, uh, there we go. Alright, so yeah, I took all the, uh, like three pin codes, and now it's literally the, uh, the, the run, or the walk to the end of it. Basically, uh, we have to use the, uh, the three, p uh, the three pin codes that we got, um, to unlock this door, and then turn on the generator, and then that's about it, am I right? <laughs> but yeah, basically, uh, nine six, uh, nine two six, sorry. And then we enter. But yeah, um, I do want to give a few shoutouts as well because this is coming to the end of the game. Shoutouts to uh, uh, like the runners of this game, like Nerd Square, Mad Mad, um, Swordfish. Uh, these guys are pretty cool runners. Um, thanks Egg, for having me on the show once again for your birthday again. 
Happy birthday. Yeah. What a good time. Guys, also, do not go. Uh, usually, I'm I'm usually the last runner of the, the marathon, but like, this time I'm actually not. Which is pretty cool. And, uh, you know, the last run of the marathon is Haunting Ground, which is a pretty cool game to actually uh, sit um, sit and watch if you really want to catch Haunting Ground. But yeah, uh, Haunting Ground is going to be run by none other than the birthday boy. Yeah. Yeah. Also, take care of yourself, by the way. You you actually went to the hospital like a few days ago. Take care of yourself. Don't Anyways, worry this about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Okay, this is the last part of the game, basically. Oh yeah, Kayako's com uh, coming. Um, picked up event right here. I have to avoid her right now. This is literally just me avoiding her. Oh no! Police! They're attacking at all angles. Okay. Last part right here. Time's gonna come up pretty soon, and... Time. There you go. That's you on the grudge. As you on the grudge. And now I can actually sit up right. Ah, oh, there we go. Remember, don't oh, die to uh, Kayako. Die to Kayako. That's how you do it. <laughs> I just died to Kayako. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's all Jew on the grudge. Um, that's any percent anyways. Uh, if you ever do want to try to watch the true ending of it, go watch it on YouTube. Uh, basically, I collect everything, 100% did, and then you get the true ending of the game. Um, or you can watch like one of the uh, the, the past episodes of uh, Speedruns on the Crypt. Actually, Nerd Square ran true ending on your show. Or, yeah, uh, yeah show. we had yeah. true ending on before. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, this is like one of the few times that I'm actually showing <laughs> showing my face cam as well. Uh, normally I have like a PNG horse thing, but yeah. Uh, the only reason why is because, you know, I get to show off my copies of Jew on the Globe. <laughs> including the silly one as well this is exactly. the power version yeah and also this is a wii game but yeah um if you guys want to check me out uh i run a lot of horror games i run a variety of games as well i do uh stream on twitch.tv slash jewhorse so there's that um also one more thing as well i don't know if uh you know i don't know if the guy is around but uh shout out to mad rpd or Signing my, signing the pal copy of the game. He said like, oh yeah, to my favorite horse speedrunner. I was like, Pog, Mad RPD actually signed my pal copy of this game. But also as as well, thanks to uh, Yorki Desu for actually sending me a pal copy of Drew on the Grudge as well. Fun game. Uh, I can find I, I can finally sell this game for 170 US dollars, Poggers. Uh, anyways, uh, heck, go. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you, Joe, for doing the run of Juan the Grudge. It is certainly a fun run to watch. It's one of the more unique games you'll probably see get sped right, and it really shows that any game can be a speed run. Uh, anyway, we do have one more game for you coming up next, and we will be right back as we set that up. Alrighty, everyone, welcome back from the break. I uh, had a couple of fun games, and I have one more for you I'd like to show you. So, I gotta show you a couple of games I like watching, but how about a game I like playing? Uh, this game is one of my personal favorites, and I enjoy speedrunning, and I want to show it to you. Uh, you don't get to see this game quite a lot because this game is quite rare, but I really do hope that you enjoy it. Uh, anyway, how about we get started in a moment here? We can go 3, 2, 1, let's go. Alright, to start things off, uh, this game's really rare. Uh, a lot of people may know it as Haunting Ground, the Japanese version is called Demento. Uh, it is a PS2 horror game that is one of the, like, legendary three rare horror games, which would be Rule of Rose, Kuan, or, yeah, Kuan, and Haunting Ground. Uh, I'm playing on the Japanese PSN version because, one, it is much cheaper, although I do have a North American copy, and, uh, two, uh, it's faster because you're on a PS3 instead of a PS2. Uh, I am both the runner and the host for this run. I, I'm, I can do both, luckily. It all works out that way. Uh, anyway, as a game, we're going to get into quite a lot as we go, but right now we're just kind of getting through the intro. Uh, this game is also quite a unique horror game, because not only do we have the, uh, you know, standard survival horror parts, we also have dog manipulation and dog tech, which we'll see more when we get to that. 
Uh, for a category, we're doing uh, ending A and New Game Plus. Uh, this is going to be like the definitive game's ending. And then we're doing New Game Plus because New Game Plus removes one of the more tedious sections, which is stamina requirements. Anyway, speaking of stamina requirements, I'm actually starting off right here uh, where I'm walking. I'm walking here because if I run, I'll be out of stamina for the upcoming fight. Uh, we're beginning to just our first stalker of the game. That's going to be the primary enemies, and we have to handle them very carefully. So, here is Debilitus. He's a nice guy. We're going to ram him four times. Uh, I just, I'm trying to spam this out as quickly as possible. It is slightly RNG on where he might go. Are we good? I get bumped, and he is now gone. The first uh, fight with Debilitus will always take four rams. They just ram four times, and he is now gone, and I can make a bunch of special plates. So, what are the plates going to do? I'm solving every puzzle in the game immediately. Uh, so I'm going to start by putting in meth. Uh, up next will be Adamus. Uh, this is going to be one of the New Game Plus items we'll be using, which will come in handy later. Uh, we'll be having Powder, uh, which will be another New Game Plus item, and Morrigan, which will be our last of the New Game Plus items. Uh, they're not definitively broken, but they're very nice for Marathon. As well, we'll be putting in Salt, Sulfur, and Mercury. Uh, these are going to be uh, tablets for a puzzle later that requires three elements. And we'll also be putting in RRL, which will be the last of our puzzles. As well, for cheeky fun, how about we put in something called Saltatio? But you speak Aladdin, you know what this means. If you do not speak Aladdin, you do not know what this means. Anyway, we have all the tablets done. I have now solved like every single puzzle in the game that that's required for. Also, meth is a reference to, I think, Hebrew lore. It's the Hebrew word for death. Uh, Emeth is also, funny enough, the Hebrew word for life. I'm not Jewish. I just learned it from, like, I think, haunting around facts. Anyway, chat, uh, here's your brain. Uh, here's your brain. A dancing golem. See, he dances. All right, now here's your brain on drugs. He just sort of dies. He melts immediately. So uh, I guess the moral story is don't do math. Uh, I do need to be careful, though, because uh, I, I probably will make safety saves as we run the game. Uh, I gave myself a more generous estimate because I know that this game can be quite cruel. Some of the uh, stuff later, uh, there's at least certain moments that can be rough if I'm not careful. But luckily, we'll have a save and we should be able to deal with that properly. Uh, but yeah, that kind of uh, gets past the first barrier of uh, puzzles. Uh, and now we're going to be getting uh, just a few items for later, which should be nice. We'll be grabbing a key, and we're also grabbing this uh, herb right here. I want to say it's like uh, chamomile. Uh, it is a stamina buff. Right now, I don't have any of the New Game Plus items. We also need the key, because that key is actually the important thing. That will open the door that is locked. Uh, the tutorial is mainly going to be introducing us to a lot of the enemies in the game, uh, which is going to be, you know, the stalker we met, which was the Beltis. Uh, as well, we're going to be introduced to our next minor enemy, which is the Luminescence. Uh, they're blue orbs of light. If they hit you, they alert stalkers around you, so don't get hit by the blue orbs of light. Uh, right now, we are also still in the tutorials, so we'll just be going right down here, grab a map, and come back up. Also, you may be noticing that I'm kicking doors instead of opening them. Uh, doors that open outward are faster to kick because it is a quicker animation than opening. Uh, however, not all doors open outward. Some open inward. If they do that, you have to open them. Uh, if you're wondering why am I opening some, not opening others, that's why. Alrighty, and now it is time to introduce everyone to, uh, probably everyone's favorite part of the game. Uh, except for speedrunners, because, uh, speedrunning this game can be quite rough around this. That's right, it's the dog! We're going to be having uh, the titular, or not the titular because he's not in the title, but we're having one of the main characters. Uh, we have Fiona and Huey. You can't just have Fiona, it's Fiona and Huey. So there's Huey. Uh, he'll help us out in a moment, but we've now unlocked him. Uh, we just have to go back, and then the game can truly begin. 
you see the uh, the castle starting to open up a little bit as I'm uh, returning to the cutscene. Uh, we're gonna be getting a lot of take at once, and we're gonna break down quite a lot. But hopefully that explains a lot of Fiona's base movement. Alrighty, now it is time to learn about Huey. Huey the dog. He is a dog. Now, Huey is a really interesting design because unlike every other video game dog, he's actually a dog. What that means is he won't obey you immediately. You have to train him. So, what does that mean for us? This game is really difficult because he does not obey you immediately. So, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving him very particular commands at very certain times. Uh, the reason why this is is because it makes him more likely to listen. Uh, the commands of Huey early are very important. If you mess these up, it gets really bad. Uh, I had to work a long time to find Huey manipulation. Uh, if you're wondering, how do I know what I'm doing? Every time he barks, he's registering a command. So if you hear a bark, you're good. He is currently doing the thing. Uh, the problem is sometimes he might not entirely do it, which at that point you'll have to scold him. Uh, we get a marionette now. And we're also going to use a map that we had and the camel we picked up. That'll give you more stamina so I can continue running. Uh, you could actually let QE follow you at slower speeds. However, I think it's slightly faster to use the camel because then you can run at full speed while Huey can catch up. Uh, I, ideally, Huey would follow you the whole time, though. Uh. Right now, it does look like he is doing that. All right, let's see. So I walk here, wait no. to make sure I see Huey, say no, Come and on. continue. Up. Oh, no. Hold on. Come on. Buddy. Huey. Oh, boy. Come on. Hey. All right, come on. Uh, there we go. Okay, uh, that was bad RNG. This is not looking good. I'm already kind of worried about the run. Uh, anyway, Huey is RNG. What that means is sometimes he will decide to listen, sometimes he doesn't. Uh, while you can call it certain points, it doesn't always work. Anyway, I'm going to tell Huey right here to uh, go and grab an item. I don't actually need the item, but dogs can't climb ladders. So this is the only way to get him down the ladder. Luckily, Huey does improve as the run goes on, and it can be strongly, you know, a lot of variables throughout. But hopefully you won't have a problem. Hopefully. Okay, so now we're gonna call Huey, and what this is gonna do is I'm gonna step on an activation pad. Huey's gonna walk right towards me. I just tell him to stop, and he'll wait right here. Now, fun fact, the game actually runs while cutscenes are happening. So it is absolutely imperative I skip this cutscene. If you do not, Huey will step off the platform. However, if you do, you can make it through nice and easy, and I can remove the trap from the wall there, which will be very handy later, because I need that turned off. I'll be coming back here later about the game, and we're actually be hitting one of the harder skips of the game right now. Uh, this is a very bold strat, but it is a very fun strat. Uh, the idea here is that Debilitus is about to spawn in and he'll be chasing me. However, I'm going to hide right here. Did not work. He immediately spotted me. Anyway, backup strat. We're going to hide behind this door. Okay, backup strat worked nicely. Uh, main strat did not work as well. So what will happen there is Debiltus can be RNG. A lot of these stalkers are RNG. Um, if Debiltus walks past you, you can just sneak by him and immediately start proceeding to the next area of the game. Pretty much what I'm doing now. Uh, unfortunately, he did not do that, so I did have to go to the backup. Not all runs are perfect, but you know what? We're, uh, we're managing out here. Hopefully, I won't have too many more shenanigans. Uh, also, a big thing about this game is that you can't interact with things if you're being chased. That is why it is very necessary that I had to hide and get away. You can tell I'm away because the music has stopped being frantic. Uh, music's going to be a big cue here, so if I ever am listening for music, that is why. Uh, right now as well, we'll be making our new game plus items. We're making Adamus, which is going to give me more stamina and health. We're going to be making Morgan, which will um, make me invisible if I stand still, which is a good safety strat for marathons. And we're making powder, which is a special tool which will help us at the end of the game. That is the only reason we need it. Uh, making each of these does not take very long. In fact, it is kind of worth it overall. 
If you're wondering what you would do on a new game file, what you would do instead is you would uh, stock up on lavender and chamomile, which is health and um, stamina. And then you would uh, have Fiona kind of slow crawling throughout almost the entire game, which is quite rough. Uh, anyway, as a neat little trick here, I'm going to be using one of the game's stairs to actually teleport me down because I need to be on the first floor. However, I don't want to use the stairs. So there's a jump scare that will happen here where you break the patio uh, and summon Debilitus. I just summon him in because that gets me down faster. It also brings me outside, which is right where I need to be because I need to lower a drawbridge for the first like major end puzzle. It's kind of weird because Haunting Ground has a lot of little puzzles that ramp up to big puzzles. And uh, that is what we're building towards right now. Uh, the big puzzle here is going to be... Argu there's two, arguably. Uh, one of them can be considered a death puzzle, while the other one's like how you get to the death puzzle. So, this is how you get to the bottom section. There's a lot of puzzles in this game. I mean, it's a horror game, right? Okay, so what this does is now I have someone to build this back. He got tired of looking at me previously, but now he's back. Uh, the reason why this is, is because whenever you enter certain areas, the stalkers can't enter it until you finish the puzzle. So I was like, oh, hey, you lower the drawbridge. Here he comes. It's a jump scare. And yeah, I wanted to have these games from, uh, you know, the birthday, the birthday episode, because they're quite fun. I mean, uh, you know, I think they're neat. They're fun watches, and I hope that you all enjoy them, everyone. Okay, now it is time for another RNG section of the game. I'm going to have to hope that Huey cooperates. Huey does not always cooperate. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. I also need Debil uh, Debilitus to cooperate. Let's see here. So, he needs to keep following me. And I need Huey to also follow me, and, you know, be in the room. Hopefully he's in the room. Wait. Okay, I need that music to carry. He is in the room. We are good. Okay. So what happens here is this is a weird checkpoint. If you go to that corner of the room, uh, if you have Huey in the room, it will knock out Debiltus. If you don't have Huey, you will immediately go into death mode. So uh, Debiltus is now knocked out. Uh, Huey took him down. And now we have Huey back. A uh, little bit of A, a little bit of B. It all works out for what we want to do here. Alright, we're gonna wait right here for a moment. There he is. Come on. I also got good RNG, sometimes this door's open, sometimes it's closed. I actually have no idea why it does that. Uh, it's not a major time loss if it happens, but let's see how Huey behaves. Uh, Huey's actually doing really good right now. I don't wanna, you know, jinx anything, but uh he's trying his best out there, right? And he is certainly doing a good job. Uh Huey is gonna be mandatory for a lot of the game's puzzles, so you have to make sure you get along with him. Uh, anyway, a bit of human uh, manipulation. You stand right here, Huey will always go in the hole. I don't know why, this exact spot, Huey will just go right in, uh, and then you can get the flower. The flower is also timed, so if you don't know what you're doing, it will expire, and then you have to come back here. Uh, I'll run over here, call Huey, because it's more likely to bring him out the hole faster, and then he should be following me. But something to actually note about this game really quick. Um, time is a very, very important factor when it comes to Haunting Ground. Uh, why is that? Well, not only is, you know, things like the flower based on time, the removal of stalkers is also based on time. So from this point onward, the moment I knocked out Debiltis, I have about maybe seven minutes total to do everything I need to do. Luckily, as a speedrun, we're not going to have that problem. We know what we're doing. However, if you're, you know, you don't know what you're doing, you're learning the game, it can be really rough because there's a lot of mistakes you can make that might activate that earlier. Uh, stalkers normally kind of get knocked out to further degrees, they're knocked out for a certain amount of time. Like, if you kick this door, Debilis is very likely to come back and get you. Noise can make it happen sooner. Uh, so can uh, things like... What's the word? Just being in the wrong area of the game, because they kind of roam around the map. Uh, but luckily with the route we got going on, it's mostly safe. And now we get this key from Huey, and now we don't need Huey for the rest of the section. The whole goal of the game is try to uh, get out of the Huey sections as much as possible. Alright, so now we got the next key, and we can uh, make our way over to the next portion, where we're going to be getting one of our, like, major keys.
hopefully this has been a lot of Huey information and I guess game information with the different stalkers. Also, as you proceed through the game, different stalkers have different kind of mechanics. Fiona. We're ignoring that man. It's just a cutscene. We don't need to talk to him. You can also open the gate here, which can open up the other side, but we don't need to do that because it just loses time. Uh, you do that for another category, but we don't have to do it here. However, what we do need to do is go to the piano room. You know. Uh, the piano room is going to have one of the first of major puzzles. Uh, as well, everything I've been doing has kind of been setting up for later puzzles in the game, funny enough. Uh, we're going to be turning this three times to the right. Uh, that's going to like, it's actually a really easy puzzle. You just turn it until it like, makes a sound and then, oh, hey, you did it. But now you've unlocked this door and you might remember this area. This is the very first area of the game. Remember that door I opened? I opened it for a reason. Here's why we opened the door. Uh, cause now I could run in here nice and easy and do this. Not only was it stamina management, it also gave me easier, uh, you know, just getting right into the door right here. Okay, so now we have a neat trick coming up. Uh, Debiltus will almost always spawn here. There are times he does not. Uh, he's actually in a really rough spot. Uh, I don't think he's gonna follow me. And if he does, let's play it safe, we're not gonna risk it. What you can do is if Debiltus knocks you off this ladder, uh, you will immediately fall down. You don't have to worry about animation. Uh, which, that can be good. However, it's very risky. If you don't do it just right, you go into panic. Or death mode, as you can call it. Uh, panic is bad, because if you get hit at all in panic, you die. So we're not gonna worry, we're just gonna run on to the next puzzle, which, uh, we're actually gonna be backtracking through the whole area we went through first. It's kind of funny, because a lot of people thought, oh, what if you went back the way you came? That's not faster, it's actually slower by a weird amount. I'm pretty sure it's because of the amount of ladder climbing you have to do, but... It's weird, right? Also, we have Huey back. We don't need him, but he, he finds his way back sometimes. It's weird because it's one of the only skips in the game. It's not really something you bank on all the time, though, because it's RNG dependent on how much Debilitus is behaving. If he behaves, you can do it. If he doesn't behave, you can't do it. One of those things, so we don't usually uh, rely on it. All right, so now we have a puzzle that's pretty chill. Uh, he's not gonna chase me in this room. Or is he? Is he? No, he stopped, okay. I was like, okay, wait, he's never, he doesn't chase me this far. Normally he leaves. Okay, so this room's chill. You match the colors to the blocks. Like, you just, all right, green, green, silver, silver, orange, orange. You just make sure everything's going the way it needs to go. It's a very simple puzzle. And the order is almost always the same because, um, you know, certain blocks lock out other blocks. Uh, I can talk a little bit about the game while we go. So this game's quite neat because it is a... Clock Tower style game. It is based on the Clock Tower franchise. Originally, it was kind of meant to be a Clock Tower sequel. However, they didn't want to pay money for the license because, I mean, Clock Tower 3 bombed. So they kind of wanted to do their own IP from the fragments of Capcom games during the time. And it's a very neat game. If anything looks like RE4, you are correct. That's because it is RE4 pretty much. The castle, a lot of stuff in this game. A lot of Resident Evil assets. And then a lot of Clock Tower 3 assets too, funny enough. So that is why the gameplay works like that. Alright, we're moving, moving some of these blocks around. Uh, I am doing a particular order here. Uh, the only reason why is because I want to make sure that I'm going for one long section of pushes. Uh, you could push the orange block earlier, but it does lose you a bit of time because you have to stop pushing at one point. So that's why I kind of just push it into the corner, which will I'll be slotting it in, and then we good. Uh, I also had to make sure I had way for the silver box. Uh, and then the last two orange boxes. And then you'll kind of see, hey, wait a minute. These are the puzzles we did earlier. And then we'll be coming to our first boss fight, which, for the sake of the, uh, you know, the hotfix here, I will be making saves before every boss. 
Well, except one because I already have a save on one of them, but you get what I mean. <sighs> We're going to be making saves for the rough sections. You never bank on something going perfect. If it was going to go perfect, uh, you know, you wouldn't have higher estimates. Alrighty, so we have the puzzle here. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, same deal as last time. You just uh, talk to it and get the light going to the right. Uh, we're actually going to lock this door for later, because currently it's locked, but we can't unlock it. And then, uh, one left. There we go. It's a fantastic game. Uh, haunting, I love Haunting Ground. Uh, I put a lot of work into speedrunning this game, and it is quite fun. Anyway, I'm going to make a save right here. Uh, normally, you know, I would probably make the saves ahead of time, but it really doesn't hurt to do it live, because then, hey, you know I made that save. I, uh, there it is. So we're all we're all good on that one. So this is meant to be a really hard puzzle where you need Huey because uh, the floor is lava. If you walk in the wrong spot, you fall and die immediately. No, like no leniency. Uh, you're meant to have Huey kind of guide you, but the answer is always the same. So you just kind of go right, middle, left, which will be taking the same way when you get back. But it is gonna be kind of neat how we can avoid doing Huey puzzles because we know the answer innately. Alrighty, and now it is time for the first major boss of the game. This is going to be the Debiltus boss fight. Debiltus has massively changed over time. Uh, the boss fight's to be easy, we're gonna tell Huey to wait. I don't want Huey getting involved as well. I'm gonna go run to this one and tell Huey to wait again. Uh, you have to break two chandeliers. That's pretty good, he broke one. I'm now gonna run to the other one. I'm gonna tell Huey to wait again, make sure he stays out of it. I'm getting a ram, I'm gonna hide behind this pillar while continuously walking into it, and fight's done. There we go, we did the whole fight. Um, this is the leniency ending. So we have granted Debilitus the right to live. Uh, in doing so, he now gets to live. That That is good for him. Uh, you could just murder him, but that's slower and also that's mean. We're not going to murder poor Debilitus. He's a good lad. He is the, he is the type of guy who would be watching GDQ. He's a good man. So. He's good people. He's not, he's... Not a bad, Debiltus is innocent, so you let him be there. Uh, anyway, since the boss is done, we're not going to be entering the next boss area, because that's how it kind of, like, that's how you kind of go area to area. And uh, what's going to happen is cutscene. We're going to get poisoned immediately. Do not kill the Debiltus. He's, he, he's a baby. You can't kill the man. Anyway, here is Daniela. Daniela's going to be our next stalker. Uh, she is much meaner. She is not a nice person. Uh, so. Also, yes, that is true. Uh, killing developers will lock you out of ending A, which is why we're doing this category. Uh, right now, we can't run. Uh, we've been fed our parents, which uh, that's normally a bad thing. So we have to walk back to bed to sleep it off. By the way, that is the actual lore of the game. It's pretty wild, right? Uh, right now, we're going to be uh, starting up the Daniela chase. This is the next stalker, and it's going to have some odd uh, quirks. Uh, we're actually not going to be interacting with Daniela almost entirely. Uh, her quirk is that she's afraid of mirrors, which we'll see. Uh, we're not really going to do that more than maybe once. Okay, there she is. Uh, she's now chasing me, and she has her awesome song. Uh, luckily, I don't really need to really worry about Huey or Danielle at the moment. We're just going to be running back to where we were, which luckily for us, hey, remember this? We opened this earlier. We're going to be able to go right back to where we were, which the answer is we're going back to that door I tried to open. That's also why I had to unlock that door, because if you don't know, the door I opened uh, before the built fight that was the door of how you get into the next area. It brings you back to that puzzle room. Which is pretty convenient. As well, Danielle will be spawning back on a, an event scene. Dogs in this game usually spawn either over time or through events. So planning a lot of the events does bank us the time we need to do a lot of the run. However, I do need to be careful because we did watch cutscenes. I, I, I've been kind of wondering if watching certain cutscenes will end up uh, causing stalkers to misbehave. Hopefully they don't, but we shall see. 
Also, if it looks like Devil May Cry 1, that's because uh, it's likely has some, uh, you know, assets from that game. Uh, this game is a whole organization of borrowed assets from Capcom games. Oh my god, Daniela's back. She found us. I can't believe it. She was cleaning the blocks the whole time and she found us. Okay, so right now it's not really much of a chase. You just run. It's a set piece. And this teaches you Danielle's weakness, which is mirrors. We're never going to interact with this weakness. Uh, outside of this one, like, forced instance. Okay, Daniela is now gone. Come on. More importantly, it's time for Huey. Now, I bet a lot of you may have been waiting for this. If you don't know. You call this, uh, I guess, the March of the Good Boys. I named it that. Why? I mean, it's an accurate name for what's about to happen. So, I kind of mentioned that we don't have a lot of time to train Huey in a one hour speedrun, roughly. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of time to train the dog, and training the dog is a good thing, so it makes him more likely to listen, which will come in handy a lot later. So, what's going to happen is we're going to be in a bit of a little waiting period. Because I need this Luminescent to solve a puzzle for me. It's going to chase me. It's very slow. Come so what will I do during that time? I'm going to give Huey commands. Come on. And then if he listens, good boy. he's telling good boy. There we go. I think we got one more on. Good boy. Come on. All right, so now I'll be able to grab the item, and then we'll wait right here. Come on. Good boy. There you go. All right, sweet. And yeah, you have to like hit the lantern with the light. It makes a lot of sense. Come on. All right, and now hopefully with all the good boys, Huey will be cooperative. I kind of need him to really behave right now. Uh, this is one of the more risky parts of the run. Uh, the reason why is because a bad command here of all places will spawn Daniela. Uh, Daniela is currently out of the area. She's not going to bother us for almost the entirety of the chapter. Uh, so I'm going to call Huey right here. Hopefully he listens and follows us the whole time. Uh, sometimes he doesn't. Uh, now, the background music's going to vanish. That's because Daniela's right there. So what I need is I need Huey to follow me without me having to call him every time. Which hopefully he will. See? I'm really worried because I don't hear him anymore. Come on. Anyway, while we're waiting for Huey, we're going to be putting in the salt, sulfur, and mercury talus. Remember those? I solved this puzzle already. Come on. Huey might be bad. Uh oh. Oh my god, here we are. Okay, he did. Hold. He did it? We're in danger right now, but he did it. Okay, that's good. Okay, so he solves that puzzle, and we're gonna get up here as soon as possible. We save up here. Okay, hopefully we'll be fine with this. Hopefully. I actually hear Daniela funny enough. One, two, okay, now I get a key. That was actually kind of risky. Uh, I'm really happy that, uh... Let's hold on. Okay, well, this is news because um, I've never had Daniela spawn here. Uh, we should be fine because Daniela quite literally can't get up here. So she can't do anything. Just have to wait for the music to come back. Danielle's gonna begin her hunt. I wonder out the way. Every time, right? Every time. Okay, I wanna make sure I walk. <laughs> 
All right, let's see. This is why we grabbed this uh, item, by the way. Morgan's nice. It's a great item. This is an item I grabbed earlier. It's called Morgan. It makes you invisible. Uh, the exact reason I grabbed this is for marathon safety strats. Uh, stalkers can't see you when you need to hide. And it makes it more likely that they won't mess with you. I just need Daniela to go away. I had a feeling I probably should have waited, waited longer. But, uh, hopefully she'll leave. Hopefully. Are there any differences between the Japanese version and the US version? Not really, no. Uh, the major difference is one's a lot cheaper. He walked right into me. Okay, this is bad. Okay, now I need to play this very safe. Well, I mean, this is why we made it a 115 estimate, by the way. This is the exact reason why. I actually kind of think that this would be the problem one, not... Wait, is she on me? No, she's... All right. As long as she doesn't... All right, we're good, we're good, we're good. And it usually takes a couple of minutes for Daniela to cooperate. I had a feeling uh, with Huey taking too long is going to be a problem, but... Huey is not always a good boy. Let's just put it that way. Luckily as well, I did not spawn the luminescence. They can actually come and bother you while you're hiding, which makes it really difficult. Problem is, the room I need is in another area. I think there's a way for the music to stop, right? Thank you for the happy birthday wishes, by the way, everyone. Let me try something out. I'm curious here. Trying to make, try to see if I get the music back. Music back yet. There we go. Okay, we're safe. Yeah, so music's kind of like really important for the run. Like, no music is what's going on. Like, ambient noise, really good. And then, frantic music, you're being chased. Okay, we got rid of her. That was actually pretty good. I know I said wait a little bit longer. Okay, so this is the mirror room. The answers are always the same. It's the dudes. And it's the hourglass. If you choose uh, any other option, you may die. There's a few options you can choose that won't lead to death, but you're probably going to die if you choose other options, so don't pick wrong. And right now, we now need Huey. This is the only Huey puzzle... Uh, sorry, one of two Huey puzzles in the section. Funny enough as well, this room's also guaranteed to be safe. So if I did need a place to hide, I could have done it here. However, ideally, you wouldn't want to use this room because... Then you, Fiona would be hanging around, or Daniela would be hanging around here. Uh, anyway, he was actually doing really good. It is uh, red, red, blue, green, blue, and then, you know, red, yellow, green, yellow. And then once you do that, you have this. This room is no lo now no longer safe. Uh, luckily for me, though, I just need one more room and then we'll be good on what I can do. That might be bad. All right, we're safe. Oh my god. Uh, luminescence can spawn right in that hallway. It is RNG if you to get discovered while that happens. Uh, luckily for me, though, once I open this door, it no longer matters what I have to do. This makes it much, much easier. Because once you grab the item in this room, you'll have a guaranteed evade spot, we can call it. Um, I kind of mentioned a few of those throughout the game. We'll be having one in one moment. Also, earlier you saw me grab an item. I'm not going to use that item. That is lavender. Uh, lavender kind of reduces your panic. Uh, right there, you're grabbing a mandrake or a mandragon. Uh, that will raise your panic because it screams and freaks you out. Uh, this way, you don't immediately go into full panic. Also, oh no, I'm being chased by Daniela. Whatever will I do? What will I do? I'm going to ram into this door. So for some reason, entering the crypt is a safe spot. Just like speedruns. <laughs> uh, once you're in this area, Daniela will never follow you as long as she's not alerted. Uh, I don't know why that is. It's just... 
This is one of the safe spots of the game. And then you can immediately lose her, which is really nice, because now you reset the Daniela counter. Also, we now get to use the last of our pre-made items, RRL, and we now get to watch this golem just... March. I want to mention this golem is running faster than the characters in Jew on the Grudge. I watched that game. They were not very fast characters. Uh, also, you're kind of meant to, like, you know, look ahead and find out where you're meant to be going. But since I already know all the answers, you can just type it in at the very, very first uh, puzzle, which is kind of nice, right? Also, as a kicker here, you learn about meth right here. This golem has also... I don't know what is with all these meth-addicted golems, but uh, don't do meth. If you learn anything, don't do meth or you will melt into a puddle and die. I think that's accurate. I don't actually know. But it's probably rather be safe than sorry, right? Anyway, he has now removed the blockade from the path of the fire and Rumi getting to the final puzzles of Daniela's section for the boss fight. The Daniela boss fight can be mean, and funny enough, that's actually one of my only safety saves I made before this run. So I don't need to make another one. I have one already made. Uh, I don't kick any doors here, because if I do, there's a uh, good chance Daniela can actually spawn in. I don't want to mess with that. Uh, you don't want to mess with Stalker uh, AI uh, as you go. Uh, right now, this puzzle is pretty easy. This is going to stop the, uh, the flooded room from being flooded. Uh, it's going to be right, and then right twice in the bottom. Oh yeah, that reminds me. My controller uh, has the... I don't know why it broke. The, the vibrating... Uh, the DualShock vibration system. It doesn't work on my controller anymore. I forgot about that. Good reminder, I guess. I should probably fix that, or, you know, buy a new one. I'll buy a new one. Anyway, it is now time for the night puzzle. This is kind of the death puzzle. The last one was like the entry puzzle. So, certain tiles. It's going to be red, red, black, red, black, black, red, red, black, red. I can do that backwards. I'm not going to. Why? Memory backwards is not nearly as easy. So, we're just going to push the button. Also, this means I don't have to be nearly as worried about the upcoming section. All right, it is now time for the boss fight. Uh, luckily enough for us, uh, whenever we enter like major set, set pieces that need Huey, Huey will be teleported to us. That's actually why we're ignoring him almost entirely. We don't need Huey right now. He will teleport to us. So. Daniela's boss fight. How does it work? I need Huey to be aggressive and Daniela to be passive. We need to push all these blocks into like, you know, you can see that there's major slots. And I need both Daniela and Huey to cooperate. It is a two-pronged fight. Uh, it looks like Huey's doing good, but Daniela might be being mean. Uh, Daniela's being nice enough, but Huey's being really good. Now, if you're wondering, is there an optimal path here? Uh, whatever you can push the fastest. Ideally, you just want to make sure that Daniela does not die in any of the paths. She doesn't die, she gets knocked out, I should say. Uh, Huey uh, mounting from behind is going to be a lot faster of an attack. Uh, it also does more damage. It also looks like she might be on death hit. Dude, Huey, oh my god. Yep. Huey, that was actually a perfect... Oh, wow, okay. Hey, thank you for the happy birthday stuff, everyone. And uh, Huey did really well there. As you can see, Huey was very aggressive during this fight. Uh, apparently, the good boy training did work at that point. Maybe he's making up for the, uh, you know, the two minutes of loss that we had earlier, roughly. And, um, yeah, now we just have to have Danielle step in the middle and you win. There we go. All right, and there's, uh, there's the Daniela fight. All right, she gets a giant glass in her, and now we're gonna grab this key. Ah, uh, this is gonna be the key to the next set piece, and we have a moment to chill before our next stalker. However, I actually will be making a save. Why? Well, actually, I don't need to make it immediately. I probably just have to make it um, right before we get to the room we need to be. I, I know where to make it. Worst case scenario, I'll do the Daniela fight again. We have a luckily generous estimate, because I fully expect Haunting Ground to be a mean game. 
So, now we're going to be entering uh, probably one of the most notorious enemies of this game, Ricardo. Which, uh, Ricardo is quite the mean enemy. He has bad plans. We're not going to talk about what he wants to do. He wants to do bad things. He does not have good intentions for either me or Huey. So, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to escape. But he will be the next stalker. Uh, I will definitely say the lore of this game does get kind of dark as well. I guess continuing on that, we have a new enemy, uh, Humunculus, Humunculi. Uh, these are like little failed clone babies that if you, um, get grabbed by them, they act like luminescence. Okay, so what's Ricardo's angle? He has a gun. It's a flintlock pistol that has like infinite ammo. It's kind of wild. Also, as weird as it sounds, it's Ricardo with two C's. All right, or two R's. Wait, two, wait. The two C's, I think it's two C's. Anyway, right now I actually need Ricardo because he's chasing us. There he is, he found me, and we're gonna be running him. That's Ricardo with two C's. So, Morgan's gonna come in handy. Remember this spot right here? I'm gonna wait. And I'm gonna turn invisible right here. Uh, all right, Ricardo is now gone in the hole and we're good. Ricardo with two Cs. And now uh, Ricardo is now hopefully gone for the entirety of the chapter. Uh, if he is not, this could be pretty bad. Come on, Mr. Huey, get in the hole. All right, there we go. Make sure he's there. And now hopefully Ricardo does not leave the hole. Now, this chapter is very important. If any unnecessary noise is made, whether that be you get grabbed by an enemy, you kick a door, uh, you call Huey too many times, you run in the wrong spot, Ricardo will show back up. He is also one of the only enemies in the game that has the potential to one-shot you. Uh, that is very dangerous. Uh, this door in particular can trip you up because, uh, yes, you can kick it. If you kick it, he will show back up. As well, we get a couple of the uh, little humunculi babies. Uh, they're going to spawn in, which is bad. We're going to need Huey right here. And we're going to make sure we're only doing necessary commands. Uh, this is also the point I'll be making a save. Right here. I talk about making safety saves. I'll make another one right there. Uh, that is a good one to have, because this is right before a rough spot. And yeah, I, I love Haunting Man. I think it's a really neat game. Uh, there's a lot of uh, cool stuff with it. Alright, we're good. I was like, I'm hearing footsteps. So there's mine? Yeah, they're mine. Also, kick him. But I do want to be careful. Ricardo can show up here. If it happens, luckily there is ways out, but hopefully we should be fine. You can also notice I'm opening every one of these doors. Come on. The humunculus following me is also RNG. Sometimes he keeps up with you, sometimes he doesn't. Come on. There's Huey, and really enough, you can actually have a very generous range. Anyway, Huey has now done his job perfectly. This whole section cannot be done without Huey. You only need him for this one item grab. This is it. However, Huey still will be important for getting me out of jams in case I get in them. Because the homunculi are still around, and I can ram them. Uh, ramming is good here. Uh, also kicking. We can kick them and ram them. Uh, now, we just have to make sure we don't make too much noise in terms of, like, kicking doors or, uh, calling. But I'm very happy that we do not have GDQ Cardo. Those who do not know, I ran this game, uh, a few AGDQs back. And when that happened, I had the worst Ricardo section possible. Uh, this is incredibly rough. Uh, Ricardo really, like, hounded us for a good five minutes. Funny enough, I bumped up my estimate because of this. Normally, I'd make the estimate lower. Uh, for Ricardo kind of, uh, you know, you only get fooled once, right? 
or whatever. Okay. So the mission we have now is we need to go to these big machines. We need to like do alchemy. Alchemy. We're alchemists, right? Alchemy. So uh, we're gonna go to certain machines, and these will upgrade the rocks I'm going to. Uh, these rocks will then be used for uh, one of the ultimate puzzles. Now, the problem with this section is the baby homunculi. Because they can actually get you right when you spawn through, or right when you, uh, like, you know, move through a door. Uh, that's really bad if it happens and really unlucky. Uh, but it can happen. I'm kind of keeping an eye out and, I guess, an ear out as well. Also, I don't hear any music, and that actually really worries me. It can be either homunculi or Ricardo, and I really hope it's homunculi. Alright, music's back. All right, we have one more, which funny enough, this one's kind of mean. Uh, the reason why is because this one is all the way back into the Daniela chapter. Meaning, if you did not notice it, uh, oh no, you're gonna have to, I hope you, I hope you like backtracking. Funny enough, by the way, I think this um, Keona's model is based on uh, Jill Valentine. You can actually see Jill Valentine in RE5. It literally looks exactly like this character, uh, which is quite fun. And I think it's kind of a chicken and the egg thing. I think like this is based on the original RE RE1 make Jill, but then RE5 is based on this game, which is weird. I don't know why they did that, but they did it. All right, anyway, here's the last one. We get that nice and easy, and uh, we now have the item we need. We just have to make sure we get to the uh, exit, and then we shall be good. A lot of my worries are kind of going away, which is nice. Like, a lot of my concerns were the stalker hits you in a point where you can't solve anything, which really sucks. If you're wondering what's the remedy for that in a casual speedrun, you reset because your run's dead at that point. Unless you're doing a no reset, which at that point, uh, you have to wait for minutes on end for them to leave because there's no other way to proceed if you can't do the one puzzle that's needed. Uh, Huey puzzles can be quite mean for that exact reason. Oh, uh, okay. Alrighty, so. One more doorway and we are clear of Ricardo 1. Yes, I said 1. All right, we're good. Door is now locked, and we're entering another RNG portion of the run. Uh, funny enough, I bought a strategy guide for this game. Like, you know, the Prima game stuff? Brady games, Prima games, back back in the day, the good stuff? I bought one of those, and I because I always wonder, how do some of these sections work? So, the forest is hell. That's what it is. It's a terrible section of the game. I, I don't know why they made it this way. Uh, all the paths are RNG, except they're not. Path number one is seated. So right here, it's always gonna be the same. Path number two, RNG. And anywhere you go, RNG. Certain set pieces are not RNG. Everything else is RNG. I don't know why it's so RNG laden. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna lead me back to the where I was. Yep, okay. Uh, currently, I'm not having great RNG. Uh, luckily though, you actually won't get chased here. Uh, however, the upside is the ending is always the same. Uh, which I'm pretty sure I'm gambling and losing here right now. Maybe? Yep, gamble and loss. Okay, I entered, uh, one of the, uh, worst forest paths. By the way, you can gamble and lose on the first forest section. It is RNG, not RNG. RNG, not RNG. Uh, we could check the up path, but it's almost never the up path, but... No, it's, ne it's never the up path. They're not taking the up path. So we're actually gonna go this way. Uh, Huey's actually right down there, and you can save him. Uh, saving Huey will raise your dog level, which is actually nice if you want to train Huey and love Huey. Uh, for the speedrun, that's bad. Why? It spawns Ricardo. Also, we don't need him. Alright, we got the ending. This is always the ending. Okay, we're down to the forest. If I went right, I would have had it immediately. But this still isn't a good path. We are on the final two chapters of the game. We're actually getting pretty close to the end. Alright. 
Uh, forest is now done, and we are now hitting uh, the tower. The tower is quick, but it is pretty difficult. Okay, so Huey's our friend, so we're gonna have Huey help us. He's breaking us out of jail. It was all those good boys. That's how you get uh, free. See, if the Pirates of the Caribbean uh, guys said good boy, then maybe they would have been let out of jail. Alrighty, so, lore-wise, what's going on here? Uh, Ricardo is now invisible. Except he's not invisible because Huey can see him, so Huey's going to attack him. I bet you're wondering, how did Ricardo master the power of invisibility? So, he's not invisible, he's only invisible to Fiona. How so? Well, you must understand, Ricardo simply put, don't see Ricardo juice in Fiona's eyes. It works every time. I mean, what better way to make someone not see Ricardo than by putting don't see Ricardo juice directly into their eyeballs, right? Anyway, the tower climb, and this is so awesome. Like, uh, for those of you who have played this game casually, you're going to hate me a lot right now. <laughs> also, no, you're not going to see that. So we're going to spawn Ricardo. Oh no, I better run away. I'm going to run away, I'm quite scared. We're going to run, we're going to run back down the tower. Okay, Ricardo's gone. The easiest way of getting rid of Ricardo is going down and up. He will always go away there. He instantly goes away and will last long enough for you to do what you need to do before the next time. Uh, I do want Huey following me, which he did. That was actually really good. Good job, Mr. Huey. Uh, we're not going to take Huey with us. We don't want to lock him out. And now Ricardo is going to come back. So, he's going to drop a barrel on me. I'm going to dodge it. Uh, same thing right now. To avoid Ricardo, we're going to be going down and immediately back up. See? Down, up. Ricardo is now gone for the rest of the tower. Until the very end, which won't matter. Like, I've watched people play this game casually, and the tower is such a rough section of the game. Because a lot of people don't realize if you go down, back up, he will leave. As long as you're not, you know, taking too long. Which, I mean, convenient for us, but not so convenient for people doing this game casually. That's why it's one of those sections that's really, hey, you can kind of see the speedrun at work right now. Huey. Now, as well, he has his ultimate line of defense, a bunch of luminescence. So, the way I deal with these is I uh, just start walking into the wall, uh, make a nice line of luminescence, and then just skirt past him. And then, hey, look, we're good. Uh, they want to attack Huey because I guess they don't like Huey. I, I don't really know. They just don't bother him. And now we're going to be hitting uh, another Huey puzzle. This is going to be one of the most rough Huey puzzles in the game. Also, since this is a puzzle room, Ricardo will never actually fight us here. Go. Okay. So the idea behind this is that it just... Huey, you go to one, Huey goes to the next. Now, the problem is Huey doesn't always stay put. So what I want to do is I'm telling Huey to stay here as well. Uh, that command normally will make Huey more obedient for one moment. I have no idea why that works. Uh, I've watched a lot of casual playthroughs. Uh, one particular from a friend of mine named Catlink. She was doing this game. She just kept uh, telling Huey to, like, wait. And I was like, huh, that actually works a lot better than what I've been doing. So I just started adding in more weights, and what do you know? It became way more consistent that we can just make this work almost every time. Now, obviously, Huey won't always do it. Sometimes he'll run off immediately. Uh, sometimes he will not even be on the platform. But if you do it this way, it usually kind of works. But also, I think Huey is really obedient right now. I think the dog level really went up from the uh, little bit of chase. Okay, and now it is time for a boss fight. Uh, also, um, the whole plot of the game is that Fiona is really special because she has eternal life in her on an, uh, something called Azoth, which is a really cool like elemental thing. Alchemy, right? And everyone wants her Azoth because having Azoth means you get to live forever. Uh, having Azoth also, more importantly, gives you apparently superhuman strength, because uh, Fiona's going to break concrete with her foot. I sto ship stone.
Anyway, there's a couple of cutscenes that if you want to learn more about it, you can uh, check me out on Twitch, on my own Twitch channel. I can tell you more about those cutscenes there, not here. And uh, time for a boss fight. I'm going to tell Huey to go right here. Uh, this boss fight has the potential to be one of the quickest in the game. Uh, I need Huey to... Oh, wait. Okay, there we go. I need Huey to make sure he goes there. Uh, as well, I open the hole right here for a reason. Oh. All right, good fight. All right, Huey, kill them. And then he falls off and dies. All right, he doesn't die immediately though. Something happens to him. We're not gonna watch it here. If you do wanna learn more about that, check me out on twitch.tv slash It's uh, the good place of learning about the, you know, uh, little bits of haunting ground. You can say that much. I'll definitely say it's not exactly the most, uh, most friendly for a GDQ show. Let's put it that way. So, we're now going to be running down to the bottom. Uh, luckily, we're right at the end of the game. Uh, we're making good time, and the end game goes by super fast. It's kind of funny, because most of the game actually uh, takes place in the early game. It's like, Debiltus is long, uh, Danielle is long. Once you kind of get to Ricardo, it starts picking up, and you'll see immediately why. Uh, there is actually minor RNG right now, too. Uh, this is actually something suggested by a Haunting Ground enthusiast on Twitch named B. Jessica. But, in theory, if Huey were to follow you the whole way, you can save a slight bit of time. Uh, I've never been able to have it happen. But, in theory, if he did follow you, you can save, like, a few seconds. The problem is that he almost never, like, he never goes fast enough to make it worth it. But in theory, you could do it. Uh, but we're actually having a lot of tricks right at the end of the game. And it's really weird that this game's so, like, endgame heavy. And you might be wondering, what kind of tricks could a game like Haunted Ground have? Especially, you know, at the end of the game here. And it's going to really trivialize all of it. Oh, sorry, there's Ricardo. He's just, he's chilling. That was me this morning, actually. I was just, you know, dying in my bed. I should also mention, over the weekend, I had to go to the emergency room. Uh, I'm fine now, but that, that was me over the weekend. Dying on the ground. Well, not on the ground, but in a hospital. You know how it goes. Alrighty, we are now entering the final building. We don't need Huey, because Huey will spawn back with us, luckily, at some point. So, what's going to happen here is you get introduced to the final uh, stalker. His name is Lorenzo. And normally, Lorenzo has a lot going on with him. Now... We're not going to do that. Here's what's going to happen. Uh, Lorenzo's not gonna spawn in. I'm pretty sure he spawns, like, right past this door or something. Uh, or it's either that or one of the other doors around here. We're gonna grab the candle. Uh, the candle is quite important. But this is actually a huge glitch. So, Haunting Ground is a game recognizes all enemies as equals. Meaning, this, this little orb, the blue ball, that's an enemy. That is a stalker. So, the upcoming trigger requires an enemy to currently be pursuing you. That luminescence counts as an enemy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stand right here, and uh, what ends up happening is this. You can actually hear, like, Lorenzo's meant to be in the cutscene. Oh no! Oh no! Run away! Oh no! Our foot, we tripped! What got us? It's nothing! Oh my god! And then after that, you're meant to get, like, the phase two cutscene where he's stronger and, like, more angry. But, wait. Fiona, are you okay? What's going on? What's that shuffling behind you? What could it be? Fiona. Oh my god, it's... An empty hallway, oh my god. Fiona. And that empty hallway is coming aggressively at you. Alright, he never spawns. 
He never came into the game, so he never spawns. There's also meant to be a boss by here, but uh, we're just gonna ram this. Uh, ramming this uh, activates the machine, and it brings back Huey. That's why I was kind of mentioning the, um, you know, you can stay a few seconds. You don't have to interact with the machine at all if you have Huey. Uh, but that also relies on Huey following you the whole way. Uh, to this day, I've never had a run where Huey follows me enough to where it's faster. But, I mean, in theory, if you were able to land it, it could work. But it's not something you should bank on. All right, so final puzzle of the game. Uh, this is going to be a Huey puzzle. Uh, we're going to be going right here to this. Uh, we're going to investigate it. Oh my god, what's that symbol? Huey's going to look at it, and uh, he's going to begin tracking. Uh, funny enough, I already know what it, where it is, but I need Huey to tell me where it is, because I can't get the item unless Huey digs it out. Uh, luckily, though, it is always going to be in the same spot. Which is right over here. The tunnels can get kind of confusing once you kind of learn the lay of the land. It works pretty well. And then once we go right here, uh, Huey is going to find the item for us. Now we're officially on the final boss. Uh, once you turn in the staff. Now, the final boss. You may remember something. Earlier in, the, earlier in the run, I made some items. I said we're going to be using a special tool at the end of the game. I made an item called Powder. It's now going to finally come in handy, and you'll see why. Also, just in case, I'm making a safety save. Why? Uh, the final boss can one-shot you. It's incredibly unlucky if it happens, but it can happen. It's happened multiple times to me, in fact. Not all runs of this game go perfect. Okay, boss time. Uh, young Lorenzo, he, he, he suddenly shows up. So what we're gonna do is uh we're gonna kick him to death. Uh we're gonna kick him in his uh comedic regions until he dies. So, funny enough, uh there's actually a lot of route changes. Originally a Japanese speedrunner by the name of Guruhamu started doing this puzzle the intended way. By kicking that like, you know, that rock or that bean into the pit, which will spawn fire. However, I think it's funnier to kick him repeatedly. So, what I did is I found out that an item called Powder will do a lot of damage. So, uh, I rerouted in, kicking him repeatedly until he dies. However, I've also made it a much more heavy RNG fight. Uh, if I don't get orange dust coming out of his, uh... You know... Regions. Uh, that's bad RNG. Also, uh, oh, wow, that was actually really good. That was really fast. That was extremely fast. Nope, the Japanese version is because it's cheaper and it's on PSN. I don't own a backwards compatibility PS3. That is the sole reason. There's text doesn't matter. All right, now it is time for the final escape. We're almost done. We we, we beat him to death. Uh, we kicked him repeatedly. He's trained thousands of years, and now he's dead. Uh, so now it is tremors and earthquakes. Uh, what's going to happen is I need to make it through the set piece here. Oh, my God, that's uh, that's bad. Okay, okay, I gotta play really safe. Uh-oh. Uh, luckily I made the save for the fight. That was a lot of tripping. Uh, I might be dead. Uh, hold on. I got to mash like crazy right now. This is a mashing puzzle, by the way. If you ever wonder, you're struggling in a game, Capcom game, mash. Oh, I'm getting really... All right, luckily he's, like, slow right now, but this is really unlucky. Oh, right! Okay, that makes a lot of sense. All right, we're done with the puzzle. We did it, we did it, we did it. Oh, so you ever seen that movie Man on Fire? Anyway, he dies, and, uh, GG. No, I bet you're wondering. I bet you're wondering. What was the problem? Why did I keep tripping? Remember how I mentioned my vibration and the DualShock broke? One of my major cues is gone. I need to buy a new controller race set for on this game again. 
Anyway, yeah, that is Haunting Ground. That is a GG. We can watch her ending here. Fiona uh, gets her escape, and that was actually really good. Uh, you know, it went a little bit rough in the mid game with Daniela, but I kind of expected that. I guess I can go back down to the 110 estimate with Haunting Ground. I kind of know what I'm doing now. It all works out. Uh, I was really excited under 110, but I wasn't sure how good it can be. Um, like, I think a really good time in this game. Everything goes right, but this is definitely one of those no reset runs where not everything goes right. Uh, anyway, I'm going to take the ending of Haunted Ground uh, to take a moment to say I hope you all enjoyed this run of Haunted Ground. As a runner, I have been at Dices. I do a lot of uh, horror games on my own Twitch channel. And lately, I've been going through a challenge where I've been running through every single horror game I have ever done. Uh, as you know, I put a lot of work into setting up the Speeders and the Crypt shows. A lot of that comes because of my breadth of knowledge with horror games. Uh, currently, I have done about 218 hours of hor uh, unique horror game streams in the past month. And uh, I've beaten over 130 games because I've been trying to run through every single game I've done. I think it's like up to about 165 at this point. Uh, hopefully more as we come. Oh, so yeah, I guess I can buy myself a new uh, a new uh, PS3 controller. Can you play this game with the PS4 controller? Uh, I don't actually know. Maybe uh, I should probably just probably just buy a new PS3 controller. I need it anyway for House of the Dead. So it all worked out. And look, Fiona escapes. But more importantly, better than Fiona escaping. There he is! Debilitus now inherits the castle. You see? Now he owns the castle, everyone. And he has to do gardening for the rest of his life. But you know what? He loves gardening. Good for him. Also, it's a clock tower reference. It's a peaceful life. Uh, anyway, we can't see the IGT, however, IGT doesn't actually matter because uh, it counts final cutscene and it's also inaccurate. Uh, we can see it anyway. I look, probably got a 107, 106. Okay, we got 106. Uh, realistically, I got uh, whatever the time's on the screen. It looks like 105, 16. That wasn't a bad run. I, for, for a GDQ Hopix thing, I'm very glad for that. Anyway, uh, yeah, once again, I have been a uh, dice, and I hope you all enjoyed that. Anyway, now, everyone, I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. Uh, I wanted to have a, uh, you know, a birthday episode to essentially say, hey, uh, just thank you for being here for a lot of the Crypt episodes, and I wanted to celebrate this with you. I put on a lot of games, like, uh, I think Illbleed every year, I pick a lot of games I really like, like seeing, so hopefully you enjoyed that as, uh, I guess, a gift to me and you, in a way. Uh, we will be back in about two weeks with more Speedruns from the Crypt as well. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to be having... Uh, I, I believe it is going to be the first step, followed by As Seen on TV, starting at 7 p.m. EST. Uh, as well, if you did miss it, uh, AGQ 2024 will be live in person. It got announced, I think, literally today, uh, from January 14th to the 21st in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, you can use uh, exclamation mark AGDQ in Twitch chat for more information, or if you're on YouTube, come over to the Twitch chat and do that. Anyway, thank you all for watching. We're going to go find someone to raid and hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and or night. And thank you for watching.